Nong man. Uh, there's a very strange card sitting here on the stage when I walked out. Uh, thank you very much, whoever put it there. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Briz Vegas? Is that a thing? Um, oh, shit, I forgot about this. Hello, everyone. I'm Scott Aukerman, by the way. Thank you for coming. Australia may have invented the boomerang but America perfected it with 1992's Boomerang, starring Eddie Murphy. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. <laughs> yes! Thank you to Pat Chathams. <laughs> Pat Chathams. Guys, our first Australian show, it's so... Exciting to be here. So I'm very excited. This is someone oh. I've never met before. Uh, a romance expert. I'm not sure if he's a sex expert or a... Sex expert. Se or a sex expert. Or a romance sex expert. Or just a romance expert. I don't know. But uh, please welcome to the stage, Lil Bump the One Pump Chump. <laughs> Hi. Hello, little bump. Can I sit here? <laughs> it's the only seat left. <laughs> hey. Hi. Hi, little bump the one pump jump. Do we call you little bump the one pump jump or just a little bump or? Well, you can call me my real name. What, what's Don. your name? Don. Don? That why doesn't do you, rhyme why do you with. You go by bump? Little Bump. No, Little Bump is a nickname. And what's the one pump jump? <laughs> the second part of it. Why did they call if I made Don? Why did they go uh, Cake Boss, uh, Carlos Bakery? Mm. Um, why do they call you Little Bump first? Because I got a tiny one. <laughs> a tiny bump? Yeah. Where? Where? In my crotch. On your penis, or...? It is my penis. Oh, and it's thin, too. <laughs> you ever seen a spaghetti? No, can't say that I have. <laughs> You've never seen spaghetti? I've heard of it. It's one of those things you hear about, like, spaghetti, spaghetti, spaghetti. Like, people talk about it, and it's like... Uncle Scott puts on a blindfold and makes me slurp spaghetti in his ear. So he's never seen spaghetti, but he's heard about it. You've heard it. You haven't heard of it. Yeah, so I imagine it's probably, like, super wide and very short. Thin. <laughs> Thinner. Well, have you heard of dental floss? I've heard of it. Yeah, it's that thin. It's that thin? Yeah. You poor thing. How does it how is it even a bump if it's that thin? I don't know. It's just my nickname. There's also like basic functions that I'm curious about. How, like I, what? Sex? Even no. before that. Yeah. What we do before sex? Piss. <laughs> yeah. When you piss on your bride. <laughs> Isn't like pee is thick. <laughs> Not mine. Oh god. Mine when you do it right. <laughs> Mine comes out like a mist. Like Stephen King's The Mist? Or like The Mist. Yeah, all over bookshelves. <laughs> okay, Wait. so that's that part. Um, how come they call you the one pump jump? <laughs> because when I have sex, I only do one pump. <laughs> and then... Then the mist? <laughs> White mist. <laughs> you invited me here. 
That's a fair point, Scott Oxford. So you're a sex expert? Relationships. Relationship expert. <laughs> <laughs> Are you in a relationship? No, well, I have sex all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Many different women. <laughs> So you're not in a relationship. No. But you are a relationship expert. Right. And you have a dental floss like penis. Mm -hmm. That's short have, like a bump. And That's you have, thin and it's, it's short. It's, it looks like a, you know when you read a sentence? Yeah. You know when you get to the end of it? Right. And it's not a question or... An excited sentence. Just a declarative sentence. Yeah, that's what it looks like at the end. A period? Yeah. <laughs> You're, so it's that tiny? Mm-hmm. How raised is it? Huh? <laughs> oh, wait, so it's not even raised. It's literally two-dimensional, like a period? Oh, oh, raised. Yeah. What did you think he said? <laughs> I just didn't really hear him. So wait, you're, wait, <laughs> how tall is it? <laughs> how tall is your penis? <laughs> yeah. Like if I'm laying down? Yeah. Right. Sure. Well, you know, like a basketball hoop? Sure. Yeah. It's like 10, ten feet. <laughs> what? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Take like all that away except for like, mm. you know, on a ruler, like... So, <laughs> The lines that show you uh, the centimeters? Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So just those lines. One line? How many? Yeah. So a centimeter. What happened to the basketball hoop? He's saying it's 10 For, feet forget if it. you take away everything but one of those centimeters. So okay. ha yeah. have you shown it to a lot of people? Like, why did they start calling you? Well, everyone always wants to see it. Well, yeah, Everyone? You're, yeah. You're very proud of it. You came out here describing well, I get, it. Well, I use it all the time. <laughs> For sex. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, let's, and and, and peeing. Right? Yeah, sure. sure. Let's get well, to your, your relationship advice. Okay. <laughs> because you are billed as a relationship expert. Yeah, I'm trying to be a host on a TV show. <laughs> About relationships? Yeah, or? I've got a radio show now, but I want everyone to see me. Oh, you have your own radio show? Yeah. What's, What's it that called? called? Sex advice with Lil Pump. It's so straightforward. Hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, well, give us some of your advice. What, what, All right, well, like, let's what say, happens when callers call up? Yeah, so what? let's say someone calls in and is like, Bump, and I'll be like, Yeah, call me Little Bump. You correct them yeah. to your proper mm -hmm. nickname, which is not your actual name. Right. So in your hypothetical, they called you the wrong name. Yeah. It happens all the time. People never get my name right. And they say, you know, my girlfriend in the bedroom, I'm not pleasing her. I say, well, are you eating her out enough? <laughs> and they say, yeah. Oh, so they are. Well, I said, oh, that's probably not the problem then. What else? Are you putting your fingers everywhere? Like Anywhere. where? Where are you supposed to put them? Everywhere. Everywhere. I'm trying to learn. On the head, on the feet, in the pussy. <laughs> on the feet. On the feet. <laughs> you just lay your Not, finger on her feet. Yeah. Yeah, well, you can't put them in there because there's no hole. Oh, God. <laughs> you could do it Santa Claus style, lay a finger aside of her nose. Mm -hmm, except the nose has a hole. True. Are you supposed you're, to put you're, your fingers in there? Mm hmm. People like it. People come from it. <laughs> That's probably true. It is. So, are you like, you know, like a physician trying to rule things out? First, you say, are you, you know, what's going on? You <laughs> coughing? You, you a little bit sick? Well, I started smoking. <laughs> <laughs> when? Well, today. Why? <laughs> because my lovers demanded it of me. After we have, after we make love, I they want me to smoke. Why? Because it's a cliche. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I I smoke um, Virginia Slims <laughs> two at a time. And you started today, but you already know mm -hmm. how often you do it. 
Yeah. Well, I had sex a lot. Okay. So, when people call you up... I had five lovers. Okay. (laughs) All here in Australia? You're from Australia. No. Did you think he sounds like he's from Australia? I don't know. I've never met this guy before. Why else would he be here? Why are you here? (laughs) Why are you here? I told my story. How did... Uncle Scott, how did you find... Lil Bump the One Pump Chump to invite him on your show. I look, my producer books the show. Mm-hmm. Who's that? We. <laughs> Who's your producer? Gemma. Gemma? <laughs> she was very polite in the emails. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Give her a ring. How long's Gemma been working for you? 35 years. 35 years? Wow. How old are you? 36. So, since you were one, she has been in your employ. Yes. My mother and father decided I needed a personal assistant, (laughs) as I had a lot going on when I was one years old. Right. What were your main occupations at one? (laughs) Pooping. (laughs) Crying. All right. The normal one-year-old stuff. I got you. Yep. Yep. So, anyway. (laughs) Yeah. Don. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Give us some of your advice here. So, for instance, I have a nephew, Todd, oh, who's, yeah. in, who's in love, presumably, or, or infatuated. Uh, yeah, I've got a big-time crush. Okay. Have you tried eating her out? <laughs> Is that well, the first question all well, the time? Well, it usually helps. But, like, if someone's your crush, you probably haven't done anything with them yet. Because you haven't, oh. you know, made it official that you're together. Well, I would try that first. So you want me to just walk up to her or him and eat him out? Yeah. <laughs> I'll That's try. assault in a lot of cases. Well, you would ask. Can I eat you out, you'd have to say. <laughs> you would have to, to say? You. I should be talking to t- <laughs> I feel very uncomfortable doing this. <laughs> okay. You're moving your head slightly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my neck hurts. Why? Oh, from... Eating, eating her out a lot. Okay, I got it. No. From what? I buck my head back when I hump. But you only, you only do the one pump. Yeah, but I did five today. <laughs> and I don't stretch. Why not? If you know you have this problem. I don't know. I forget. I get into the moment. <laughs> What's it like? Like, how do you initiate sex with a woman? Mm, uh, shake her hand. <laughs> okay. Hey, would you like to do it? <laughs> do you have a bed? Are you asking me? <laughs> or is this part of the role play? No, that's what you asked. Since <laughs> you ask. You're wait. Are you asking Todd or? No, that saying- was that was confusing. You asked the girl. You shake their hand. Mm-hmm. And you ask them, "Do you have a bed?" No, first yeah. you first ask, "Do you want to do, do it?" it? Do then, you- "Do you have, do you a, have bed? a bed?" Okay, what if they say no? Then you take you go to your bed. <laughs> why are you, why not your bed first? Because it's unkempt. <laughs> you don't make your bed. No, because everyone's going in and out of it all the time. So you never get to go to the other bed? No. (laughs) And I always want to because I always want to see how other people do their bedrooms. Wait, you're interested in interior design? Yeah, my bedroom sucks. (laughs) What? My posters suck. What what do you have posters of? San Jose Sharks. (laughs) Hockey team. Hockey team? Yeah. I know you know. Big hockey fan? Yeah. And, um... I had a um, Michael Jordan poster that's basically ripped in half. What? Who ripped it in half? Well, it gets so sweaty in there, the whole thing gets wet. Now it's just falling apart. The poster gets sweaty? No, the sex people get sweaty, and that sweat <laughs> fills the whole air, and the whole air gets humid. Oh. And so that one, it really affected that one poster. Yeah, that one poster wasn't made well. So when you're having sex, do you call yourself a sex person? One of, yeah, one of one or two. One, one of, of one what? or two? Yeah, masturbation. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Look, I, I don't think that you're a sexpert at all. Okay. I, I, 
As a matter of fact, I think that you're... That's rude to bring me out here and say that to me. It's my, it's my radio job. I mean, you seem to not know anything about sex. Yeah, or relationships. Yeah, I mean, I think Todd probably knows more about sex than you we do. We haven't gotten to Todd's problem. Yeah, wait. Todd is infatuated with someone. I'm in love I with... said eat the girl out. <laughs> okay, but what if it's not like that? The, uh, I'm in love with their personalities. Oh. Mm. Have you ever been in love? No. No? No. Really? Nope. Not a problem for me. No, nope, I'm fine. Have you ever loved anyone in mm. any way? Mm-mm. Do you have parents? No. Pets? No. I was an orphan. You were? I was. What are you now? <laughs> I'm a grown-up. <laughs> you can still be an orphan. You can? Yeah. Oh, I guess I'm an orphan, grown-up orphan <laughs> who owns his own home. <laughs> you I, I, did, I, I presumed you rented. <laughs> <laughs> well, my radio show is successful enough. Hey, I can buy. little bump, do you have kids? Not anymore. What? Oh. <laughs> what happened? They grew up. <laughs> <laughs> They're still your kids. I know, but I read that riddle on a popsicle I was eating. And I thought it'd be fun to the do. The popsicle joke was, do you have kids? No. What happened to them? No, they it was. They grew up. <laughs> it was. <laughs> oh, God. How come the kids went away? It was, it was how come the kids went away and then you ate the purple popsicle and says they grew up. How come? <laughs> hold on a second. How this come, other riddle was actually better. That's a scary joke on a popsicle. So, how come the kids How come went the away? kids went away? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don, I got to say you are you're not well. What, like I'm a mess or something? Yes! Yeah, maybe. Maybe I work too much. No, I don't think that's the problem. Yeah. How, how, what do you how, even do? Maybe I spend my time traveling around the world going to condom conventions too much. Condom conventions? You couldn't even convention. wear one. What? You couldn't even wear a condom. Are you looking for the one condom that'll fit you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How many condom conventions are there happening worldwide? Like today? Yeah. <laughs> There's like one per continent. <laughs> Including Antarctica? Everyone always asks that. <laughs> no, they double up in Asia. <laughs> Just so every continent is represented. Yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> So you host your radio show, mm -hmm. but then you're also chasing these kind of conventions. Right, because I want to see what's out there. And there's one per continent, two in Asia. Yeah, usually. Where was the one in Australia? Here in town. <laughs> Here in Brisbane. Yeah, it was, it was uh, the floor above us. It, above us right now? Yeah, well, hold on. Let me see if you can hear any of it. <laughs> You're trying to listen to it? What, what are the sounds of a condom convention that normally... Like, you'll hear, like, that's too loose. Hey, that's too tight. <laughs> a lot of complainers. Yeah, because you can try them all on. I would imagine your complaint would always be that's too loose. It fell off. The whole thing did. I, you know, I put them on like, you know, when you get into a sleeping bag. <laughs> that's how it feels. If you, into a you should use like rubber cement and just paint it over your bump. <laughs> also, is there any need for you to use a condom if you're just shooting out a mist? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever gotten a woman pregnant? Yeah, well, well, he has kids. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Kids well, he doesn't have any more kids. Anymore. Doesn't have he kids has adults. anymore. Adults. Remember the tale of grown the, up. the purple popsicle? They're in. <laughs> they're in college. Yeah. Oh, that's really. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough time for anyone. Well, yeah, especially uh, you know when they come from like a sex freak like me. <laughs> You have empty nest syndrome? Yeah, a little bit, but I fill that time with travel. 
<laughs> to the condom conventions. That's right. You're an interesting guy. Why? <laughs> Don't get so defensive. That's usually a Just compliment. my voice. I'm interested. Keep talking, please. Are you saying that to me? Yeah. Hey, little bump. <laughs> yeah. What's the question you get asked the most on your radio show? Aside from what should I do to please her in the bed? <laughs> yeah, aside from that one. Um, well, it's a lot of dildo questions. Are you known for dildo questions? I'm known for getting a lot of dildo questions. <laughs> People assume I need one. <laughs> <laughs> Why would one assume such a thing? Because I got a tiny one. <laughs> oh, I, in order to please a woman, you need right. to bring your own accessory. Right, but I don't. <laughs> I pump them once. <laughs> Are these and I fall asleep. <laughs> don't forget the smoking that you started today. <laughs> well, how, that's going to be tough to work in. I have to be woken up <laughs> to smoke. So, uh... Have you, do you get paid for this job? I mean, you say you work a lot. Yeah, I get paid a lot because I own my own home and I get to travel all the time. <laughs> so you're, you're rich. Yeah, I make six figures. Which, which figures? Seven. So you Eight. make $777,777? $777? Yep. <laughs> a year. And 77 cents. <laughs> really? <laughs> It was part of the deal. Why would you make such a deal? Because they thought I was quirky and I wanted to live up to it. <laughs> the people who made my deal. <laughs> Wait, not your employers, but the people who made the deal for you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Your lawyers or whatever. Yeah, my lawyers and manager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. So you, you, you don't love your children. Well, I hardly ever see them. They're always rushing off to the football games or their tests. That's college stuff. Yeah, well, I miss them and I want to hug them. Okay. Did you ever give your, your children sex advice? Yeah. <laughs> did, did they take... Can you guess what it was? <laughs> I, I can guess what it was. The first line of advice. How did they respond to that? They said, well, you know, I, I just have feelings for her. Maybe I should talk to her. I said, you can shake her hand. <laughs> just, so just like what happened with Todd. Basically, yeah. <laughs> My oldest son, <laughs> Mark, he, got, he went to an orgy <laughs> recently. Oh, this is recent. And he yeah. told you? He told me about it because he said, I think I blew out my butt. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, they were doing a lot of butt plug stuff. And he said, well, you, you know. <laughs> Continue. He said, well, he, he said a lot of people were like jumping on it. <laughs> but first. <laughs> what? And he wanted to fit in. <laughs> and he wanted to fit in, so he did it too, but he wasn't ready for it. You have to be ready for something like that? Something you got to be worked it? up to it. What do you mean? I think the idea is, correct me if I'm wrong, Don. Yeah. I think the idea is, like, they'd get up on, like, a couch or something like that, and then they would jump and, like, and land their on legs it with out. Butt. So they would land on it, so it would go directly to their rectum. Oh. See, do I have that right, Low Bump? Exactly right. Thanks, Cake Boss. Cake Boss, you got it. Have you ever been to an orgy, Cake Boss? Cake Boss? Um, not in a long time. Like, when I was in Baker's College, certainly. What Baker's College did you go to, by the way? Oh, I went to a Baker's College somewhere near Cambridge oh, in Massachusetts. I oh, I think I know the one that you're talking about. <laughs> uh, and you went to an orgy when you were in Baker's College? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was a thing that people were doing. Did you implement any of the cooking utensils? Well, everyone was drenched in flour. Drenched. Dr positively drenched in flour. Was wet, it wet flour? <laughs> it became wet flour. From what? All the mist? How, how did that get the groan? <laughs> <laughs> Why weren't you constantly groaning for the past ten minutes? Hey! <laughs> you take offense at that? The type of talker is my feelings. 
You are constantly looking at your mic like it's not turned on. What is happening? <laughs> no, nothing. It's not the mics I use in my radio show, so I'm not used to it. Oh, okay. Sure. What are the mics that you use? They're bigger. They're like, you know, have you ever seen like a big, um, like a big Muppet? A big Muppet? Yeah, like Snuffleupagus's nose. I wouldn't consider his nose to be a complete Muppet by itself. Well, I just wanted to get you know what a Muppet is and then bring you closer and closer to the specific thing. There's actually Muppets that are closer to the size of a microphone. You didn't have to go to snuffle up because... Like what, that worm? <laughs> <laughs> the one who lives with Oscar? Yeah. The Oscar has a roommate now? Doesn't he have a worm that he always hangs out with who crawls around on his lid? It yeah. seems familiar, yeah. Well, they're bigger than that. They're smaller than Snuffleupagus' trunk. Somewhere in the middle? Mm -hmm. Like the size of this one? It's about, like, mm, an inch longer than this one. <laughs> you were talking about centimeters before. And it's just before. as thick. It's just as thick, though. Yeah. Okay. So you're unaccustomed to something this size. Right. Yeah. It feels so, weird. Yeah. So uh, the orgy just naturally just kind of went the way... That one would think? Yeah, a bunch of people had sex with each other, and then yeah. uh, it was over. Did everyone leave better friends? As a matter of fact, no. Wow. <laughs> a lot of relationships got broken apart. That's a problem with orgies sometimes. Yeah, for, for this, on this occasion, it was 100% the problem. Mm. Yeah. You're married now. Of course I am. I got a beautiful wife and kids. Where did you meet your wife? At college. <laughs> In this... She was checking coats at the orgy. <laughs> checking coats? She was the coat check girl at the orgy. So the coat check girl, was everyone naked under the coats? Yeah. <laughs> there were big, big coats with nothing underneath. <laughs> and then at the end, everyone got mad at her because uh, she gave them the coats back and they were covered with the flour and the coats got ruined. Yeah, well, so were they. Did she say no, that? No, no, they they put their coats back on, mm -hmm. forgetting that they were drenched oh. with flour. Well, that's not her fault. Exactly! And you took pity upon her. I took her side, and I said, do not blame this coat check girl. And then we fell in love. <laughs> that's a sweet story. It's all right. Can she get the image of you having sex with multiple partners out of her mind? Oh, well, her eyes, she was the coat check girl because she was blind. She was blind. Yes. She's so not blind she anymore? Get nope. people's coats back for them? What's that? It's a hard job to have if you're blind. Oh, people are yelling at her left and right. No, that's not my coat. Just it feels guesswork. like this. They were trying to describe what the coat feels like. And most coats, they just they feel like feel coats. They feel the same, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it feels like wool. And she's like, I got news for you. <laughs> I gave it away. What? I'm a little more interested in why she's not blind anymore. She got struck by lightning. Wow. Where? Like powder. In New Jersey. In the head. That's what I was going for. <laughs> so she struck by lightning. Yeah. Were you with her at the time? Oh, yeah. I was holding her hand. You were, wait, so you were struck by lightning, too? A little bit. What happened to you? I was struck by her lightning. Did anything special happen? You I lost four teeth. <laughs> They just Did any mist out of, come out it of just you? shot right out of my skull. Was it like in a cartoon when you get electrocuted in your skeleton shows? I forgot to ask people if they saw my skeleton. <laughs> was anyone looking at you at the time? or you know? Oh, everybody was. But that would look cool if you looked like a skeleton. It was our wedding day. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to need you to back up. Well, we got married in a park. In a park? Yeah. In Hoboken or in... Yeah, in Hoboken. Oh, okay. And everybody's there, all our friends and family. Okay, so a lot of eyes are on you, so yeah. you know people are looking at you. Pouring rain. <laughs> and, and outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> are you by metal or something, or...? Well, yeah, I mean, we had a metal <laughs> kind of gazebo built uh, for the ceremony. Sure. We wanted it to last, you know, well, like a wood one's a little, maybe a little too flimsy. Right. You wanted it to last, meaning you were going to take it with you after yeah, the... Yeah, we were going to put it in the backyard. <laughs> okay. So we could say to kids, that's where mommy and daddy got married. Right, right, right. So you're up there on this metal gazebo. Yeah. 
and it's the middle of a thunderstorm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were dressed in medieval clothing. I was wearing full suit of armor. Why, was, why were you not struck by lightning? Why did she well, get... Well, because she had one of those uh, cone hats on, and it was taller than me. <laughs> so lightning comes down to whoever's tallest? The lightning seeks the tallest, uh, yeah. That's oh. why the lightning rod, you, know, you put it on the roof so it absorbs right. the lightning so the roof don't get struck. Right, right, right. So she was like uh, one of those inches... She was like a human lightning rod. Oh, my God. She was wearing like a princess crown hat? Yeah, but it was made out of metal. <laughs> it was made out of tin. She must have a strong neck. She's a very strong neck. She's very proud of it. She must stretch. Strong. She got hey. voted strongest neck in a high school yearbook. Really? Yeah. I'd love to see it. <laughs> hey. Her high school yearbook? Yeah. My wife. I don't want to see your wife. I want to see the You're book. Just the yearbook. Yeah. You're just interested in the other I part. I want to see it when it was at its peak. <laughs> now, now it's gross again. <laughs> Why? You said you don't want to see my wife, you just want to see the yearbook, but you want to see the neck when it was at its peak. Yeah, when it was at its best, strongest... Hey, hey. All right. Hey, buddy. This is my All wife right. we're talking about. One pump okay. jump. Come on. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to offend anyone. <laughs> Are you, you sure? What? I didn't know this stuff I'm saying. I don't want to offend anyone. I want to help people. <laughs> I don't think you've ever helped anyone. What are you talking about? I had that one caller who never knew how to eat out his girlfriend. Well, do you... <laughs> so wait, he didn't know how? So what's your advice then? Your advice is always just to do it. Yeah, well, this guy was like, well, I don't know how. I said, well, put your tongue in there. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> For what? <laughs> For helping people realize their sexual potential. <laughs> Was she, I, I, not to get back to the wedding story, Uh huh. but if you're at your wedding day. She's right. never seen, you know, the way you look. Was she, she suddenly sees this. Was she happy with that? Scott, so then, first of all, you're assuming that she never touched my face, a la the hello video from Lionel Richie. Well, of course she had. She made a beautiful sculpture of my face. That's very imperfect looks, science, as seen in the video, because that sculpture looks nothing like him and looks like a gargoyle. It looks enough like Lionel Richie that you feel like, that's not bad. For someone who can't see what the person looks like and they're just guessing from touching the face. I mean, it's maybe realistic, but don't you think they would take artistic license and have it look exactly like it? Let's not relitigate the, the props on the Hello video. I think the property master of that video... Why don't you have him on a show and you can rake him over the coals? That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Maybe he'll show up very soon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Uh, the second part of uh, my objection to your question is it's very rude because you're clearly implying that I'm ugly. I would never do that. It's um, exactly what you just did. Well, I'm just saying that, you know, you're this, and sometimes we have a, a mental image in our minds of what the other person looks like that doesn't quite match up with... Right. The reality. Like some of us might have a mental image of what we ourselves look like that gives us the balls to talk to people this way. <laughs> like, I, I wish we had a mirror on this stage so we could compare notes. There's on one what right you up there. See. Why is there one up there? Oh, so the organ guy can see the people? And it's like, oh, they're not into it. I better jazz this up a little bit. I'm losing them. Let me play Camp Town Races. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves it. That's a Everyone crowd favorite. Loves that song. That's a good song. It's one of the best. It's a very good song. Is that even a song? <laughs> we uh, we have another guest. Can you make sure that their micro? Okay, their microphone is over there. Maybe take it out of the mic stand. So yeah, yeah, you got it. You got. You know. We have another guest coming to the... Check, uh, check, check. Bits and bobs, bits and bobs. Uh, haberdashery, knackery, snack it and lack it and knack it and fack it. There you go. 
Great works. Jokes. It works. <laughs> BT dubs. It works. Ooh, this well, must be someone of some note. It is. It actually is. This is a very special person. I believe would be a lord were he not to have perished back in 1980. He's a musician in the local band. Please welcome John Lennon. Mr. Lennon. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Great. Good to hear it. Good to know. It's good to know. It's good to know if people are doing well. That's why you ask how you're doing. Right, because if I know they're doing well, I don't have to come out and, you know, cheer them up. <laughs> give out cards that say you're doing great. You carry your own supportive flashcards. You know, flashcards and greeting cards and postcards, sure. John, please have a seat. Thank you so much. I never knew. You know, I don't know if you want me just to come out here and wave to everyone and leave. <laughs> How rude would that be for me to invite you here just to wave and then walk off the stage? That would be pretty rude. You and I don't like think that. you're that type of person. I don't think so. I've I, never done it before. It would be a surprise to me. You'd see me, you know, my face would fall, be shocked. <laughs> and I'd say, oh, well, you know, that's what you want. That's what you want. You're the host of the show. You're, my, you know, you're the boss of me right now. Please welcome John Lennon, of course, to the show. Thank you. John is... Um, explain who you are for the people who may not know. Well, I'm an old, uh, you know, I'm an old guitarist. I used to play for a European rock and roll group. Uh, we did a lot of stuff here. We actually played in London once. <laughs> once and twice and three times. We did a bunch. But uh, we were called... You played on a, a rooftop once. That's right. We, and that's, that's before, you know, rock climbing harnesses. <laughs> I, I always assumed you just walked upstairs. Oh, sure, we walked upstairs. No, oh, I think I'm confusing everyone. We walked upstairs and there was a doorway leading outside. Some people asked me, you know, did you have to climb out a window? And then, you know, no, it was a stairway and a door that we went through. Normal sized door, you know. And, but the, Human the, sized? A little size. bit bigger than a human? A, just a little bit. And, and, you know, a rectangle. They have some of them here. I walk through one to get here. <laughs> and the, the harnesses I'm talking about, I said, we got to be strapped in here, you know, because if we start... I, sometimes when I play, I would lean up against the... Uh, whatever would be in front of us. <laughs> a speaker like these. And I said, I don't want to fall off, you know, because I could kill myself. And they said, don't worry. You won't. <laughs> You're never going to die, they said. They weren't right about that. I wasn't right about that, but they weren't right about the fact that I couldn't come back. So they said, you're never going to die, but if you do, you'll never come back? Right. That's right. Well, everything was so hectic that day. People were saying things that didn't make any sense. It was, what, well, I thought we were doing the concert on the roof at three. It's two o'clock now. I know we're doing it right at 2.30. Well, we've got to get the speakers and the microphones up there. Well, you know, John, get them up there. Okay, you know, because I would move the gear all around. You would? <laughs> to help, yeah, just to help out. You were in the rock band known as... The Beatles. The Beatles. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> and there was some of it. There was, uh, let's see, around four people in the group most of the time. Uh, uh, oh. some, some, someone said <laughs> Billy. We're losing one. Not a big fan of four people, I suppose. Some would say Billy Preston was the fifth Beatle. Some say that some one is me. You said it. I would always say, come on, let's have him in the group. He's great on the organ. I can't play both, you know, because sometimes I jump on the piano. To two, you know, we would play Tutti Frutti every once in a while. That's my favorite version of that song. Thanks. And, you know, they said, they said, you know, we can't do uh, five because we've got four, and when we go out and play two-on-two -two basketball, you know, when we're waiting for shows to start things, what's he going to do, ref? And I said, he can ref or he can sub in for me. I don't care. I'm not very good at basketball. I'm, I'm frightfully sorry. Yes, Lord Weber? Aren't you dead? No, no, I, uh, <laughs> I was dead. I was shot outside my home in 
New York City. In, in the... Bo- that, that part I... That... not supposed to do that if you're on stage? No, you... <laughs> All right, sorry. Well, I figured no one hears from New York City, so I thought I'd give the cheer. Oh, fucking hey, those are the Giants. Do you fans. live in the Dakota? <laughs> That's where you live, the Dakota That's Hotel. right. I, you know, we could, we could get together and maybe figure out this problem with that smell in the carpet that's in the lobby. So I take it you're alive again? That's right. I got shot. That part a, I heard. Right, right. That's not the confusing part. That's so, the famous part of the story. <laughs> yes. The, the part they don't tell you is that after I was put in the ground, you know, you know coffin and what have you, I, Burial. I was in there for about four years. I said, this is very boring. <laughs> There's nothing to do down here. I, I've got none of my books with me. I can't even fit a TV in here, a watchman or something. Oh, why not? Because they hadn't been invented yet. Oh, watchman. So I said, I'm done with this, and I, I, I think I've explained this before. I'll say it real quick. I heard some people talking above me say that Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was coming out. Oh, yeah, we talked about this the other night. Uh, just the other night, Manchester, sure. And this I was said, 1984, and they right. were talking about the movie Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Right. And they were very excited by it. They were excited about it. They said there was a part where the hand went through the chest and pulled out the hand. Have you seen the movie? I have. Uh, so the upshot is you're alive again. Right. There's still more. There's still more. I'm fine. <laughs> Are you thinking of getting back into the skiffle game? I haven't played skiffle in a long time. Mm. You're the second person that's asked him about that recently. <laughs> is that so? Yeah. Well, what else would you ask him? Uh, how about this? Uh, returned any medals lately? No, I don't know what you're referring to. Oh! Don't you? <laughs> I have no idea. I, mean, I feel like you're accusing me of The something. so-called rocking and rolling group, the Beatles, <coughs> were given an award by Her Majesty the Queen. By who? The Medal of British Excellence. And they returned the medals as an empty statement. To look cool. <laughs> I, I don't know how to put this. When you were yelling, I couldn't understand a word you would say because these are so loud and I've lost. <laughs> level. you got to fix the levels here. I'm on stage now. What are you doing, Gino? Maybe, oh, yeah. per- perhaps if we were on a wharf, my voice would resonate uh, around the hull of the ships and you could hear me more clearly, sir. Look, I'll tell you what happened, right? I'll tell <laughs> you. The Beatles returned the medal. Right, we, I know we did. Well, not all of them. <laughs> not all of them. Not all this of them. one did. Well, you know, I, I had said, I, I had, there was, that was a time I was having a lot of neck problems. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, the, just the seeds of heavy metal were coming out. And I got, being a musician, I got into music pretty quickly. And I, you know, we would all rock our heads back and forth like this. Slowly. It was a slow thing at first. (laughs) It gained speed. It gained speed as the 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 music. As the genre grew. (laughs) Right. You know, by by Metallica times, I thought people were, you know, doing Woody Woodpecker impressions out there. (laughs) What a great sentence. (laughs) By Metallica times, I thought people were doing Woody Woody Woodpecker Woodpecker. impressions. That sentence on its own makes no sense, but when you join it with what I was talking about before. So anyway, my neck, I had just come from a session of heavy metal music listening. A listening session? Yes. And I, I, you know, I got the medal. I said, this is great. I really appreciate it. Don't put it on my neck. You can take it back. And I said something. They said, well, do you want to say, yeah, mail it to me or whatever. And I was walking away, and I don't think they understood me. That was not intended to be a rude move. <laughs> what about when you uh, played for the queen and you were, like, saying that everyone should rattle their jewelry? Ugh. <laughs> you guys are taking them to task for what sounds like bullshit things. <laughs> right? She knows it that. What does rattle your jewelry mean? Is it supposed the, to mean something? They were playing, it was a royal command performance. Ah. Did you know that our queen can order you to perform? <laughs> and you must do it, you must. Did you know that our future president can shoot somebody in the street and not get in any trouble? 
Both have ultimate power. I'd like to see them go head to head. That would be amazing. The queen versus Trump. Yeah. I think he would never put his foot in his mouth. How many rounds? Tree. Tree? <laughs> tree rounds. I think you do tree rounds, right? You do one where, uh, you know, you do one that's just like pop culture. Wait, this is a trivia contest? Wait, what's a debate? I thought it was some shit nerds did at bars. Instead of drinking and fucking, they sit around and answer questions. You fucking bars? Since I, since I opened up that homosexual side, the thing about being gay is, the best part is, it's other dudes. And we're all fucking animals, you know? It's fucking awesome. We all have insane sex drive. Yeah, we'll jerk each other off in the bathroom. It's no big deal. Girl, you, if you're a girl, your girls go in the bathroom, you're like, you want me to come in with you and finger you? They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> this is good material. <laughs> this might not be the first time you faced directly away from me. I don't know if that means stop talking. He just didn't want to look at you while you were saying those things. <laughs> But back to the rattle of the jewelry, it was a, right. it was yep. a slam on the audience because I, no one was applauding, so you were saying, maybe you won't rattle your jewelry. That was another misunderstanding. <clears throat> we were there playing our rock and roll music, and at the time, a lot of the rich people, they were listening to, you know, disco. <laughs> this was in the 60s. Yeah, you know, they were, they were new to it the way I was new to heavy metal. It's early slow disco. Right. It gets faster and faster. It's faster yeah. when it gets to ABBA. You know, I thought people were... <laughs> Ooh, the pressure's mm. on. I thought they were showing a couch mover where to take the stairs <laughs> quickly. <laughs> close. So close. Pretty close. <laughs> anyway, I said, all right, you want to make this feel... What I meant was this. We had no disco ball in the place. But we did have lights, you know, shooting around. <laughs> I said, if you want to have, you know, a disco feeling, pull your jewelry out and shake it around. The light will hit off and it'll have what you, the effect you want. <laughs> well, they why, booed me. Now, why wouldn't they just have booked disco performers to play at the Royal Command performance? Because it was so new, nobody knew any of the names of the people. <laughs> but they knew they liked it they and they... wanted to replicate discotheque conditions. Right. <laughs> Checks that's, out. That's what I, you know, that's, that's how for, I remember it. Thank you for answering my question. They were on the wrong <laughs> side of history asking. there. I think so. <laughs> Meaning they like disco? And that's they the like wrong disco. Side that's history. the wrong side of history. That's the worst thing that's ever happened in England. <laughs> disco music. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> now you want to shift the attention over here? <laughs> I didn't mean to shift it over here. I just wanted to throw... <laughs> Throw something in there, you know, real quick, hey. like an intern. <laughs> That's not your job, by the way. If I see something, I jump in there, intern admittedly. You're... <laughs> Called shot, third rep. <laughs> there it goes. You've got to call the shot before you do it. <laughs> oh, right. But you don't know how it's going to do. <laughs> That's the point of it. If I was a baseball player, after I hit a home run, I would just point and be like... <laughs> Told you. That's I was very... saying it in the dugout. No, oh, a cricket batter, hitter, clubber, smasher, all that jazz. That can be very helpful, you know, for an umpire, because those things move so quickly. You need. Oh, there it is. Right. Thank you. I'll and they it. have to watch it as it leaves. Right. It's a big thing that a lot of people don't know about American baseball. The umpire has to have their eyes on the ball no matter where it's going at and all. And if they take their eyes off the ball, he's... it's fair. <laughs> it's completely fair. Eyes off the ball, and he's out of there. Go up to him, kick a little dirt on his shin. Like fucking A Rod kicking some dirt on no more. Go- Wait, you chose A Rod. Right, right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm actually falling in love with her as the show goes on. <laughs> We're like uh, Montagues and Capulets, a house divided or something. Uh, the Lannisters. immortal Bob. So, John, what are you doing here? We've talked about your, obviously, your history, well, what you, know, you have done. What are you doing here? When now? I saw you in Manchester a couple of days ago, sure. so we had a lot of fun, and then we said goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, maybe you, we... Yeah, cut to now. Sure. <laughs> right now? Right. Let me explain how I got here. So I went down to Liverpool from where I'm from, because I needed to get some stuff out of my old house that I had left. 
you, the house you grew up in? I had some old coffee mugs and a, a doormat, you know, that had welcome spelled out with... Uh, uh, Letters? Right. <laughs> Numbers. Okay. All right. <laughs> Make fun of John Lennon Day. <laughs> no, the floor mat said welcome, and it was spelled out like in feathers, and I always loved it. Sort of a feather look. Feathers? It was, you know, it was sort of woven together and they looked like feathers and I really loved it. It reminded me of home. Anyway, so I went to go get that and some mugs. It reminded you of home. It was at your home. (laughs) It's more like home reminded you of it. Right. You went to Liverpool to get an old doormat? It was still there, even though new people probably live in your old house? Well, I never got to it. I'm walking down the street towards where it is. From Manchester? No, no, I took a bus to get to, you know, Liverpool. Copy. (laughs) And, you know, they're doing one of the sheep races down the street. (laughs) You know, where people, townspeople get on sheep and they race them around. And in the end, everyone has a big, you know, glass of beer and we all go home. God love Liverpool, you know, that type of thing. Well, I got, I put my, you know, my collar up and my hat down because I didn't want to be any pie. I just wanted to get to my stuff and go. And everyone said, oh, John, John Lennon's here. Look at him. Look at him walk. Look at him talk. <laughs> Listen to him sing. You were singing? No, they, I was whistling, you know. I said, I'm not even singing. Practicing on the whistling Pete stuff? Oh. How many stories are we going to talk about at a time? Talk about this one. So all, right, all right. So then I, I, they, I said, fine, you know, I'll do this one sheep race and I'll get out of here. They saw John Lennon walk by and their request was, would you please do a right, sheep they race? Said, they said, hey, oh my God, you haven't been around since you left for America. What have you been up to since? I said, just, I'll do the sheep race. <laughs> Explain my story so many times. Get on the sheep. And this thing, you know, I've got, I, I'm holding on by its neck, takes off. And I'm winning. I'm doing great. And I do win the race. They, they've got a little tiny trophy held up for me. I go to grab it. I miss it because the sheep is continuing to go. And he doesn't stop. And this is, you know, five minutes. Very funny. Ten minutes. Okay, we've got to slow this down. A day I'm going. <laughs> Passing through. Shopsy. Uh, Oxford, oh, Chapshi, and uh, Oxford, and uh, all the Chesters, Brisbane, all the Chesters, you know, <laughs> Brisbane, <laughs> Chester District, right, and now Berlin, Berlin. It almost seemed we were going so far. It almost seemed we were going there. Finally, and at this point, you know, you say to yourself, "Why don't you get off?" <laughs> at this point, you say that. You're, you're probably thinking how, I would get off, you know, you're fast, saying. How fast was the sheep going? Did you feel you were in peril? Should you jump from the sheep? Fast enough where, I'll say this, fast enough where if you landed on pavement, it would hurt. If you had a little bit of hay, you might have a bruise. <laughs> and no hay around. So there I'm going through all the towns. A couple days later, I'm walk, going down the street right in front of the building. And I see Comedy Bang Bang Live. I said... That's it, I've got to stop. I jump off. Thank God there was a little bit of hay. (laughs) First hay you'd seen. The first hay I'd seen. And I said, I know someone in there for sure. That's why I'm here. (laughs) It was the first first sight of anything. You were a beacon for me, Scott. So first sight of hay, you jumped off. Right. And but then I was, it was so pleasing to me to see that name. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry I'm covered in sort of sheep hair. <laughs> I was going to say, you look like a furry, almost. Yeah, it looks like you have sort of like cloud-like cotton underwears on. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the But sheep. you're in a school play, and you're playing like, you know, heaven. <laughs> the concept of. Right, right. That's a real right. heady school play. <laughs> Uh, Heaven, the concept or absence of. 
And I got into trouble once talking about, you know, religious stuff as a concept. We talked about it, actually. You brought Lord, it up. Lord Weber, you, you brought it up. So you Wait, had the crosshairs on me before I, you even knew I was on stage. We were talking about how you're the person who made Jesus not popular anymore. And then Andrew Lloyd Webber brought That's it right. back. Right. Well, that was a mistake. That Everyone was a... took you at your word. <laughs> <laughs> we had said, you know, you're talking about when we said we were bigger than him. That's correct. Right. Well, we were talking about being taller, you know. <laughs> because, you know, at the, at the, uh, the Louvre in Paris. Yep, that's what it's called. Okay. That... <laughs> sometimes, I, I, sometimes I quiet down and slow down if I'm unsure of where something is. For a world traveler, you do not seem to know anything. <laughs> I do a lot of sleeping in the car or plane. Oh, okay. So when the Beatles, my rock band, were together as a group, we went to the Louvre and we went down in the basement, uh, two basements down, nobody ever goes down there. They have a, you know, the door frame from Jesus' old house. And uh, it's, you know, it's got markings going up the side. And it said, you know... Uh, Jesus, age 33? 33, 5'8". Wow. Right, so we all stood up next to it sort of as a joke, and, you know, we're taller than Jesus. Good, you know, uh, great for us. <laughs> Let's check out the gift shop and get out of here. <laughs> and, and that's so then, where you got that hat. Was, was that? That's where you got that Louvre hat? That's right, the, the sort of diamond, the pyramid-shaped hat. I, I was going to say, yeah, why are you, uh, you were wearing a baseball hat. It's diamond shape, right? Right, right. It's a it's a pyramid, you know. Right. Oh, I see. Right. You can see. Oh, sorry. Let me turn a little bit. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. No, that's definitely a pyramid. Oh, recent pyramid news. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of a deep cut. <laughs> yep. So we would, we went on the media and said we were bigger than Jesus. That's it. We're taller than him. It's nothing against him. Nothing against me for being a little taller. You know, if you find yourself taller than someone, that doesn't give you the right to bully them or uh, pick on them. And if you're shorter than someone, you can't, you know, get on a ch- chair and punch someone in the face. <laughs> you just can't. It's not right. I'm glad to be here, though. I was so glad to see the sign. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you. Oh, thank you. John. Thanks. It's a great collection of people here. I mean, some of my favorite guests of... <laughs> Thank you. This, this is insane company for me to be in. I'm just from some fucking Chinook from Long Island, and I'm sitting here. A what? A, sh- a Chinook? A Chinook? I think it's a Native American helicopter. You must do a lot of sleeping when you travel, too. I get real cozy if I'm folded up in the crate, right? I can just pass right out like a canary. Like a canary in a coal mine. They get so cozy, they go immediately to sleep. Speaking of sting. Canary in a coal mine. Another deep cut. (laughs) Zenyatta Mondata. Is that your favorite police album? (laughs) My favorite one to save. (laughs) Although I do enjoy Rogato de Blanc. De Blanc. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. That guy probably fucks for a big chunk of his life. That guy's got a high fucking percentage. Yeah, He's Gordy. Probably, if you do the math on that, if you fuck 20 minutes a day for a fucking year... Let's He's like a two here. out. Hold on. <laughs> oh, he's beautiful minding. Oh, my gosh. John Lennon is beautiful minding. Oh, oh, Are you seeing the deli oh, workers? Oh, I'm just seeing the, the, the track listing for Beatles 1. <laughs> Penny Lane, Hard Day's Night, Yesterday. Isn't that your favorite Beatles album? I love Beatles it. It's 1. all the hits. <laughs> Right in a row, chronologically. I love them. <laughs> Couldn't figure that math out, by the way. <laughs> well, guys, we're just about at the end of the show. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Very sad. Very sad. Getting to be about 1020. <laughs> Is that a deep cut that I don't know? <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know that much about music, with, with the exception of Fat Boy Slim and the Chemical Brothers. <laughs> That's the old two. Those are my two, two favorite biggest. artists. I'm a huge fan of Big Beat. <laughs> what about Fat Boy Slim's earlier band? What was that? 
<laughs> House Martins. Oh, you say it like it's the most popular band. But you're saying it like I'm not just coming up with bands I like. Only. The people that grinned themselves to death. <laughs> the people that what themselves to death? You get real loud sometimes, ALW, and I miss a couple. <laughs> Are you telling me you're not a fan of Amazulu? Habazulu? What the fuck is he saying? Johnny Clegg and Savuka. Johnny Day? Is that a name? I think we all need to switch places so we understand each other. Well, right, I yeah. Are you on Jim Z? All right. Just Here we go. Right? Okay. All right, I'll take... Whoop. Whoop. Don't trip. There Guys, are my Do Keep not loose. trip on any wires. Keep it loose. Watch your pigeon feet. <laughs> I think I need to move back to here. Okay. <laughs> I'm hearing a little more. Where are they going? Jeez, what? Louise. Why is everyone deserting me? It's still a little better. Will no one stay awake with me? <laughs> Peter, John, James. <laughs> That's from Superstar. <laughs> You're all literally upstaging me. <laughs> We're un- trying to recede into the background. So that you're in the foreground. That's the thing that sucks about theater. You can't fade out at the end. <laughs> like a book. Yeah, like a book does. I've reached the curtain. <laughs> oh, the glamour. This is what it's like, a peek literally behind the curtain. I'm glad there's absolutely no dust back here. <laughs> it's not disgusting in the least back here. No, they keep it clean. Oh, shit, I never hit record on this fucking thing. Why? <laughs> Why has this happened? My friends desert me in my hour of need. Sound speeds. <laughs> Genocide. Drums. Must I be such an... What? Are you doing your famous catching phrase, drums? <laughs> Had <is> enough. <laughs> oh, there's tweed back there. <laughs> Well, guys, we're at the end of our time in this entire country. Can we you believe it? We leave oh. when the lights go out. That's right. <laughs> and we keep doing the show until the lights go out. Right. I meant we leave the country. What? <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. <laughs> but I, you know, the one thing that I think is that we have two incredible musical talents <laughs> up here on the stage. Thank you. A Gino. Thank you. Gino, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> oh. Shot in the dark. <laughs> and you're too late. <laughs> you guys have, have oh, never... a New Jersey band. <gasps> so oh, fuck sacrilege. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, you, you're about to pimp them into something? Yeah, you... <laughs> Pimpery? <laughs> Pimpery? Pimpery? Yes. Did you all hear what you know so that said? I, I have to admit, you know, like from here on, it's very <laughs> difficult to understand what anyone said. You're telling me. I've been over there for most of the show. <laughs> Luckily, I don't have to listen to anyone. I just scream whatever I want. <laughs> I have unfortunately heard every single word. <laughs> With my theater ears. <laughs> what I'm saying, though, is you two are such amazing musical presences. Oh, thank and you. you've never thank met you. before. Oh. No. You're legends here in England. Well. Right? It's not for me to say. Thank you. It is for me to listen to. <laughs> I think that the audience would like to hear... <laughs> what? What exactly? A duet? A duet. <laughs> A duet. A duet. <laughs> Scotland. I am, of course, gratified at the suggestion. But I would say these people have paid good money. Why stop at a duet? You're thinking a trio. <laughs> at the very least. 
A quartet, my dear boy? Well, only if there are four people on the stage. <laughs> well, I well, know the words to every song. So, <laughs> so this should the, go perfectly you know for me. You know the words to every song? Yeah, just a, every, oh, every Chemical Brothers and Fat Boy Slim song. <laughs> You know, not a lot of, there's not a lot of words. <laughs> you know, block rock and beats. Yes, that's my favorite. Fucking little brother song. Get busy, child. <laughs> it's not them. Have you ever done? Have you guys ever done music in a four foursome before? Anyone? What? A big <laughs> block? Have any of you done music as a foursome before? It's well, sure. I was close to having a fivesome of music, but of course we had to not bring another person out. So we had a band of four people. Oh, all right. Perfect. I, I used to collaborate with Tim Rice, the duo. Oh, I knew that, of course. I know, I know everything. <laughs> so what do you say? We hear a little bit, James, if you would, a little bit of that freestyle rap song. <laughs> Your dream oh, came oh, true. Oh. I shattered my glasses. The bass came in so loud. Let's see who's the best rapper out of all of us. To start off. Ah, with well, the one time I'm not. No, talking. who's the second best? Because we want to end with the best. John, get oh. on up there. All right, thank you, Scott, for giving me the stage. I'm here to rap my age. It's well, probably eighty. But I've got to check on it. I'll check on my laptop, my computer. To use it, I needed a tutor. I'm not very good at learning how to use electronics. Except for that game, Sonic the Hedgehog. And now I'm going to reach the edge of the stage and turn around because I'm done. Goodbye. I'm a rapping clown. Beautiful. Turn my levels up. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Well, my name is Rappin' Scott, and I'm here to say it's fun to rap in a London way. Union Jack, Union Jack, my neck, my back, my pussy, and my crack. God save the queen, God save my pain. I mention every body part, and this is where I depart. Oh, that was good. Gino! <laughs> this is my favorite part of the show. Well, my name is Gino. I got that flow. I don't know how this is gonna go. Sounds pretty bad. So far, I'm skinny. I had another cousin, and his name was Vinny. I said, that's the name of a lawyer I know. And he said, hey, Gino, no, you don't know. Flow, like, dead. I'm from an island that is long I may be skinny, but I'm strong I go to the deli to fill my little belly Go home to the toilet, don't want to spoil it But here's how it ends, with a big flood of brown Coming out my ends, clogging toilets around town Yo, I didn't know there was two buttons on the top of a little toilet Here in England, there are buttons on top of the toilet too Push the big one for number two. Push the little one for number one. I. All right. Wow. Come on, folks. Side to side. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. Happy. Let me clear my throat. Uh, uh, uh. Ah, ah, ah. Right. Have you ever gone to a mate's mansion to eat and the food just isn't good? I mean, the chicken is a dreadful mess. And in fact, it tastes like it's made out of burning wood. Why? Why do you treat me so? I'm a peer of the realm. Don't you know? Don't you know? Bring me things that I like to eat. Make sure that each one is a special treat. I've been knighted. I've been given a cape. I've been given a medal. And that makes... Uh, 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 what's happened? What's happened? 
give you encouragement. What does that mean? Encouragement. Oh, encouragement. Yeah, hold on. I know what you're saying. I know, I know how to save this. I know how to save this. I have, an, I have an appliance, a phone appliance, for just such an occasion. Where is it? Which page? Why have I... They changed the colors of Do the, the, of the appliance. Do the search function. <laughs> Good thinking. Computers are hard to use. I found it. I don't know if that was the right thing. Did you delete all your emails? I, did you delete 30,000 emails by accident? I just deleted 30,000 emails by accident. Finish strong! Oh, right, 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 right. Hamilton, how dare you? You came and stole my Tony. Who do you think you are? A skeleton made of all kinds of bonies? I'm not scared of you. You're a dead, not even president, don't you know? We have all sorts of dead people in wigs that float around. I'm scoffing. It is very difficult. You're doing great. No, I'm not doing great. You're doing amazing. Everyone knows that I'm doing terrible at rapping. You're great at stop, songwriting. Stop the music. Stop the music. Stop the backing track. Oh, no. Scotrick. You've humiliated me. Not in just front you. Of my, in front of my countrymen. How can they respect me now? Everyone here loves Andrew Lloyd Webber. Did you know I'm friends with Jimmy Carr? <laughs> my countrymen, my fellow subjects of Her Majesty the Queen, I apologize wholeheartedly to you for this dismal musical display that I have shown you this night, I will leave England and never return. No! No! How could I stay? If they were to clap as hard as they could, <laughs> would you stay, Andrew Lloyd Webber? Well, come on, clap, everyone, clap! They love Thank you! you. Yes, I shall. He's oh, that's stay. great. You did it, London. Well, we have another very special guest here on the show. He's been on the show once before. He is a... Uh, is he a professional... Uh, a pro pro professional skier. Professional Adventure skier. Adventure skier, yes. Adventure skier. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, some of you may know this gentleman. Uh, he is a professional skier. Please welcome Ducky Powell. your way over to your right there. There you go. Oh. Hello. Let's get that mic on. Oh, boy. Let's turn that microphone on. Microphone Hello. technology. Here we go. Let's tell you what. Mitch, we'll swap it out here. Mitch, you Thank just you. say check, check, check every Thank two you seconds. very much. Hello, everyone. Is it on? No? It's, it's not, but it's... Oh, yeah. It oh, is. now I'm here. We're loud. What a technical snafu indeed. <laughs> well, well. How many people uh, heard Ducky on his previous appearance? Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. For, for those who don't know me, I'm an extreme adventure skier. And when I'm not on podcasts or not on the slopes, I'm... I'm sorry, that's not what I wanted to say, was it? When I'm not on podcasts, I'm usually <laughs> cruising the tastiest oh, boy. slopes. Munching the nastiest fresh powder and grabbing gnarly bits of tasty, tasty air. Very nasty and very tasty indeed. Skiing is my life and it's the life for me. 
I've made no mistakes whatsoever. <laughs> Ducky, have you ever been out to a party really late at night? Has it ever affected your performance the next day? On the slopes. I could think of only one instance when that ever happened. I was out late at a party in a, a city some would call the biggest in the world. Sure. New York. Okay. And I ended up sleeping through all the alarms I had set, <laughs> nearly missing a train to take me to another city. Which city would that be? The city that we're in right now, Scott. <laughs> oh my goodness. This very same. Wow. Well, that's, that's fascinating. But sure. D- Ducky, tell me about your life. I mean, you, you ski the slopes, but, yes. but I don't know really anything about you. Well, I um, <clears throat> spend a lot of my time going from slope to slope, uh, resort to resort, and checking in on ski conditions and uh, seeing how the weather is going to be for this upcoming uh, ski season. I think it's going to be a good one. I was just up in Vermont. Mm, Vermont, yeah, yes. wonderful skiing out there. Such, mm-hmm. yeah. It's very good. I was up uh, at Stowe, if anyone's been to Stowe, Sugarbush, Okemo, Brickleberry Run, Skip Slop Trail. <laughs> and all I can tell you is that the conditions this season are going to be very, very tasty. <laughs> Indeed. The powder is so choice for munching. So they say. Munching? Munching fresh powder? Do you not know what I'm talking about? Does that mean eating snow or is that. Does that mean eating snow? <laughs> It means... There comes a time in show business where you learn where to put the mic. <laughs> and it just happened for you, young man. <laughs> Directly against here to... my lips. <laughs> I was here to witness it. <laughs> well, does anyone here know what I'm talking about when I say munching fresh powder? Yeah, they love it. They love it. They, lo- <laughs> they love to thrash, don't yeah. they? So what, what brings you to Boston, then? Well, I've, I've heard the show was happening, so I came down, and I... Love Boston. It's a very historic city, as really? we all know. Oh, I, I did a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> but there is one aspect of Boston history that really tickles my fancy. You don't say, okay. Yeah, yeah. if you hear. can guess, it's a little bit of ski history. You see, skiing was invented here. A lot of people don't know that. Skiing was invented in Boston. That's right. That's when Boston used to be a little hillier, it was invented back then. Now, you may know the inventor of skiing as someone else, but I know him as Paul Revere. <laughs> and the story, as it was told to me by my uncle, is that Paul Revere was sitting up way up top of his cliffside cabin here in Boston and who should he see but the red coats making their way across the Charles River? And what did he do but rip two planks off his shutters, strap them to his feet, with string, and he went thrashing down the nasty slopes of the Boston streets, jumping into the air, doing daffies, back scratchers, and helicopters alike. Screaming all the while, the redcoats are coming. Indeed, the redcoats are coming. <laughs> Warning everyone. Ensuing battle the next day. Many dead. A lot of bloodshed. <laughs> That's USA. the sad part of the story. <laughs> but, but the night before... It, was a, it seemed like a pretty gnarly little time, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it sure did. I'm sure, I would have liked to be on that trail run with him. Really? For sure, most indeed. Do you ever hope to invent a time machine at all to uh, go back in time and see that? Do I hope to invent a time machine? I don't think I have the brain capacity for such things. (laughs) Or the time. As I said, I'm spending most of it on the slopes. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I'd love to hear more about the slopes uh, a little bit later. You would? Well. (laughs) We can do that now if you want. Well, gosh, as much as... That would be my as dream. As engaging uh, as this is. We, we have a guest, a very special guest that we have to get Indeed. to. Indeed. Indeed, of course. Uh, okay, you know him as a world-renowned actor, Academy Award winner. Uh, he is an Academy Award... Uh, not, no, not, a, not winner, so sorry. Academy Award nominee. Oh. <laughs> I mean, really, you're disappointed by that? 
very disappointed. I mean, nominee is pretty good. Oh, I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> well, you're back on board. Yeah. Uh, he is an Academy Award nominee from the movie musical Chicago. Uh, please welcome John C. Riley to oh, the stage. Fantastic. That was fantastic. Met, uh, Mike Mitchell of the Birthday Boys? No! Hey, uh, I'm a fan of your work. Thank you very much. What are you doing? Boogie Nights. What's that? Boogie Nights. Yeah. Great, great film. Part of my work. <laughs> a while ago. Done a few things since then. Scott was nice enough to point out that uh, I was nominated but did not win an Academy Award. <laughs> Sorry about that. I... That's all right. You could have let him believe it for a little bit. I don't know if anybody would have challenged you. I think people would have been like, eh, you didn't win it, but uh, what am I going to yell? <laughs> do you know uh, Ducky Powell? Of course I do. <laughs> what? Where would you have met Ducky? I'm just a fan of skiing. <laughs> but the word gets out. I don't ski myself, but um, I like to read those magazines about skiing. And um, I do too. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, uh... Oh, thank you! <laughs> John, it's a pleasure to see you. I haven't seen you in about a week or so. And, it's, uh... it's been a little while. I think, like... I think, like you say, a week? <laughs> Around seven days or so. Yeah. 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 It's Chicago. More than, more than six, less than eight. Yeah. <laughs> Chicago was the last time I saw you. And you're... That's right! My hometown, Chicago! Yeah. Are you from Chicago? Why are you here? <laughs> what? Why would you move from one weird cold place to another one? <laughs> Not everyone can live in Jamaica or, you know. <laughs> Do you think I live in Jamaica? <laughs> no, I'm saying a hot place. Not a, you know, if everyone moved to the hot places. Uh, you know what, though? There's, there's places in between here and Jamaica, though, <laughs> that you can live. I mean, it's pretty much California or Florida. Those are the only... Florida. You're not Thumbs a fan. down. I don't like that humidity. It messes up my hair. <laughs> when you think about it, Florida is kind of shaped like a thumb going down, going boo. Yeah, boo us. <laughs> It's asking to be snapped off the air. It really <laughs> is. Like a drumstick. Thrown in the garbage. <laughs> Throw Florida in that floating garbage pile in the ocean. I like to think that someday when, you know, the, the people in the Middle East invade us and take over the country, that they'll just... <laughs> yeah, you like to think about this? <laughs> they'll just snap it off like a drumstick. Excuse me while I call them TSA. <laughs> TSA? Yeah, I'm going to call... Tina Fey? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to call... Not only airport security, I'm also going to call creator of 30 Rock, Emmy award-winning actor and writer, Tina Fey. Oh, wait, she didn't win. Oh, no, she did. She did, yeah. Yeah. I didn't want anybody to yell out, the award police are here. <laughs> now you're mad at the award police. Just before you were saying there wouldn't be any. I know, I, I am mad at the award police. <laughs> Fuck the award police! <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know uh, our friend Ice-T who does uh, Cop Killer? Oh yeah, with Body Count? <laughs> yeah. Body yeah. <laughs> he was on the show last night. He's a good guy. Oh, he's a great guy. <laughs> you ever acted with him? He's a great actor. No, I, I tried out for every uh, version of Law & Order. What? <laughs> yes! I auditioned. This is like after, after an Oscar nomination. I'm like, what? please, let me be on Law & Order, Dick Wolf. Were you just calling him that? Or did you know that was his name? Mm. 
I would be using a Chicago area regional insult. <laughs> yeah. Dick Wolf. <laughs> hey, Dick Wolf, get me another beer out of the fridge. I said deep dish, Dick Wolf. <laughs> what? Why did you make me this flat pizza? So you tried to be on Law & Order. Even Criminal Intent, they wouldn't let you on Even that one! Oh, the nerve of them. Even the reality show one that uh, was about lawyers yeah. in San Diego? Yeah, yeah, Could you try to be on that? Yeah, I was like, look, I'll show you what I look like on video. You've only ever seen me on film. This is what I look like on video. Wow. They're like, doesn't make a difference. <laughs> they were like, you're too recognizable and I feel like the audience would not be able to get lost in the story. I mean, that hasn't been a problem for the Bells. No, I know. This might also have something to do with it, too. I said, I was pitching my own story idea. <laughs> and I said, I want to be a millionaire hot air balloonist who kills a race car driver and gets away with it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that Dick Wolf's problem is. I don't know. <laughs> Dick Wolf. Yeah. Wow. So, John, what brings you here to Boston? I mean... I'm glad you asked, Scott! <laughs> I'm here because I'm going to do a play, getting back to my theatrical roots, and I'm doing this play that's a one-man play all about the life of... Recently captured criminal Whitey Bulger. <laughs> it's called Bulging with Crime. <laughs> Colon, the Whitey Bulger story. Some people were moaning like they, they've been personally affected by. <laughs> well, he's a divisive character. Because some people are like, thumbs down, he's like the Florida of people. <laughs> Throw him on the floating garbage island. And other people are like, he was like a Robin Hood type figure who protected the neighborhood from people who didn't want to be murdered. <laughs> when those people move into your neighborhood, then it's over. When people, like, when people who don't want to be murdered start taking over, forget it. Did you know him? You're from here. Yeah, yeah. No, did I know him? Yeah. No, but he wasn't very oh. Robin Hood-ish, I guess. And, and well, that's what some people say. <laughs> some oh, people I'm... say the other thing that I said. <laughs> My thesis statement is that people say two different things. That's true. Well, that is true. Thank you very much. <laughs> what exactly were his crimes? I guess I'm not as familiar with the story. Name one and I'll tell you if he did it. Because <laughs> it would be easier that way. Racket, racketeering? Yep. Check fraud? You mean kiting checks? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> That's really not too bad. Uh, um, racketeering? Wait, I said that already. <laughs> yeah, it was two seconds ago. <laughs> Where did you oh, go? Oh, lo- loan, sh- loan sharking? Yep. Okay. What about biking without a helmet? <laughs> Guilty as charged! <laughs> He's very vain about his hair. Riding in the carpool lane without a passenger? Absolutely! Wow. One time you stuck a dead body in there. Like, there's two of us, officer. Here's your graft. That's always the fear of that with a criminal that it'll, it'll escalate. So if you ride once without anyone, then you'll put a dead body in the next time. Yeah. No, I agree with you. <laughs> Thank you. And I appreciate that. Two gentlemen of the theater. <laughs> yes, of course. We both were trained in the theatrical We've tradition. tried the board. Absolutely. <laughs> So sorry. Audi- theater audiences are embarrassed a lot. Yeah. yeah. The theater theater is a very embarrassing art form. 
for the audience because it makes you self-conscious. And especially if someone breaks the fourth wall, they're like, <laughs> looking into the crowd. It's like, Ugh. I don't like it. Yeah, it makes you feel weird, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like the abyss gazes back home. Yeah. That's from the Watchmen comic book. <laughs> Ducky questions? <laughs> or statements? Anything? You want to lend a hand here, buddy? Exclamations? I had a, uh, a thought. Here we go. <laughs> thought. This is going way back in the interview. <laughs> way, way back what? Did you, in this interview, oh, this sure. uh, podcast, did you have access to a, a time machine when you were coming up with the Whitey Balter story? Is that what that was? <laughs> I guess I did. I mean, by time machine, do you mean some sort of light craft that you step into, manipulate some controls, and then when you step out, you're in another time? No, I, I miss... I, no, that's not what I'm thinking oh. about. Something with sort of the alphabet on a row, and you're pushing down on each one. The alphabet on a row. And a piece of paper will cut... Do you mean a typewriter? Yes, yeah. reuse. That's what I was mixing I up I did with. have access to a typewriter, okay. yes. Interesting. But you know what? Typewriters make books. And are books kind of like time machines? <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Good question, Dougie. Thank you very much, Scott. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, well, we, we're running out of time. We just have time for one more feature on the show. It's time for a little something that we call Would You Rather? You guys all know how to play. We're running out of time. I don't need to give the instructions. But needless to say, people send me questions to our Twitter, which is comedy, bing bong, would you rather, not uh, my own Twitter. But they can send them to your own Twitter. (laughs) (laughs) At a certain point, I'll read the question aloud. Right. (laughs) Then what? (laughs) Then I'll open the floor for questions. Okay. Did you say running short on time or long on time? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Let's get to it. <laughs> let's get to it. <laughs> Here we go. Let's this comes it. to us from R.P. Nickel. R.P. Nickel asks, Would you rather be able to make someone explode by elbowing them between the eyes? <laughs> or... Make them spontaneously combust by cursing them, but it wouldn't happen for a year, and your core body temperature permanently increases one degree Fahrenheit each time you do it. (laughs) Can we go over that again? (laughs) First one's simple. Would Would you rather be able to make someone explode by elbowing them between the eyes? Simple. Or... Make them spontaneously combust by cursing them, but it wouldn't happen for a year, and your core body temperature permanently increases one degree Fahrenheit each time you do it. I'm opening the floor for questions. I have a question. Oh, John! (laughs) In the second one, what's the first part again? (laughs) You make them uh, spontaneously combust by cursing Cursing them, them. like like a gypsy's curse, or a Romanian curse. 
Thank you. <laughs> but then your core temperature rises one degree, and it won't happen for a year after you do it. The 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 curse. Temperature. Oh, the curse. The you, the person will not spontaneously. The temperature rising happens, happens right away. Happens immediately. Yes. So you got to deal with that, but you may not see a payoff for another year. But I know that it's going to happen. You know this is going to happen. I'm telling you this right now. I know it's going to happen within a year. This person will spontaneously combust. Not, I mean, not within a year. One year to the day? To the day, to the second. So the, I can plan it out. Sure. You could, uh, on New Year's Eve. Aww. <laughs> right as the ball drops. Right. <laughs> Times Square. I curse you. <laughs> See you next year. You could if you, you know, wanted to uh, play Havoc up there in the skies, you could figure out when someone's taking a trip a year from now. I could book him a ticket. <laughs> yep. Buy him a vacation. Ooh, do I have to, do they have to hear the curse? Can uh, I do it from home, I guess is what I'm asking. You can do it online. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, also, where does my core temperature start? Great question. Thank See, this you. is the thing. Yeah, it starts at 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh. <laughs> I gotta lie down. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the other one, yes. How accurate do I have to be with my elbow? Like, does it have to be dead center between the eyes? Do you find you're not uh, very accurate with your body movements? Really, just elbows and knees. <laughs> Everything else. Is Everything just... else, I feel like spot on. But um, yeah, like elbows, I feel like I'm not calibrated correctly or something. Now, if you can get them uh, between the eyes, just kind of like, uh, let me point... Oh, no, I, know. I know where between the eyes... Were you sleeping with your eyes open? I was, did you paint, sorry. Did you paint eyeballs on your eyelids? <laughs> <laughs> For just such an occasion? <laughs> it's just like Marky Finally, Mark having that big, enormous prosthetic schlong. That's right. Uh, you, you I'm going to say schlong one more time during the show, by Do the way, it. and we'll make it appear. <laughs> You gotta say it into a mirror, like he did. <laughs> you just gotta hit him right in this area, right between the eyes. Yeah, on the bridge of the nose. All right, thanks for demonstrating on the face of a person I couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> Ducky, question? I do have a question about the second scenario. Sure. Is there a guarantee that once I curse this person, we wouldn't be making any amends to become friends again? That is the fear. That's why it, you know, so you have a one-year to... grace period... Uh, just hopefully I don't become friends with them again. Yeah, exactly. You don't get to reverse it, though. Mm-hmm. So if that ever does happen, that may be your, your you know, greatest uh, terrible time in your life where your best friend all of a sudden spontaneously combusts due to something that you did. Yeah, that could be very tough. Mm. It could be very difficult. I'm surprised that wasn't skiing related. <laughs> no, not everything in my life is skiing. I'm not on the slopes now, so I'm just taking away from the skiing stuff. Okay. Italy. <laughs> I have, I have a question. Yes, Mike Mitchell. Uh, on the first one, do you have to use that power? Like, do I have to kill someone? I don't want to kill anyone. Yes, you are forced to kill one person a day. <laughs> <Okay>. Keep talking. <laughs> but it can never be a theater usher. Stop talking. <laughs> it, and, uh, can I ask the same question with the second scenario? Do sure. I, do, I have, do you have to curse Anyone? Do you have to kill people? No, you do not have to. As a matter of fact, you probably shouldn't because your body temperature is so high. <laughs> can you what? Can you curse animals? And if you can, does that cause your body temperature to rise, or does it remain the same? You can curse any animal. Hooray! Down to an <laughs> down to an ant. Oh, oh boy! <laughs> and it does not raise your body temperature. Oh, those this, are freebies. This is a dream come true. <laughs> is there is there anyone? Fun times at the zoo. Can you curse anyone to bring your body temperature down, to bring it a, a degree down? That something? is a great question. No, you cannot curse anyone to bring your body temperature down. You uh, can get people off of death row. If you work uh, tirelessly with a foundation to get people off of death row, every person that you get off death row, it goes down one but degree. But like through the system, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then all you get out of is one, it's one, degree. one degree? Yeah. And they're, man, usually, man. they're usually guilty. Oh. oh, my God. Why won't I... Do I ever try to get innocent people off of death row? Oh, no, no. That would be against the rules. In the elbow one, yep. um, people explode. 
Sure. No, I mean, that's what you, that's what you said, right? No, oh, I thought you meant other people. No, no, no. I, I could because, cause... Because, yeah, other people are exploding all the time. Wait, wait, wait. You said I could cause people to explode. No, you do. I just... As other people are also exploding. Hey, man, exploding. let me finish my thought. What if I finish my thought? We're at a Mexican standoff that's right now. That's right. Finish them at the same time. Thank you. King Solomon what? couldn't have done better. <laughs> do Other people are exploding constantly in around the you. Eyes to explode Not them. due to you. It's they ex- you explode them, right? That is why you're able to get away with it. I was mistaken. <laughs> so you, you use your elbow, hit people between the eyes, that person explodes? That person explodes, yes. And what? Other people explode around you? Yeah, other, the, this is a world and a universe where people are constantly, spontaneously combusting and exploding. Am I really doing anything then? I feel like... <laughs> you know what I mean? You're helping them along a uh, little bit. I feel like... It's when you give a little kid a fake steering wheel in a car. <laughs> Seems like in that scenario you're only adding wear and tear to your elbows. <laughs> Good catch, Dougie. Your, your, el- <laughs> your elbows are incredibly chafed. This is okay. horrible. Um, when they explode, is there any damage to me? Is there any shrapnel? Fallout! <laughs> Collateral damage. Are those all movies you were in? Yep. <laughs> and cut out of. Yeah, I mean, someone's exploding right when you tap them. Uh, you, you know, you're going to get some, some skull... Uh, okay. Yes. okay, so people are exploding all the time yeah. anyway. Sure. That's why everyone wears complete body armor. Right, oh, no, of course. And so, <laughs> if I uh, hit someone between the eyes with my elbow, they explode causing damage to me. Right? Yes, I how, mean, if how, it gets through your armor. How often am I doing this? You're doing this every hour on the Okay. Hour. Why am I doing this? For the love of the game. I get enjoyment out of this? You enjoy it, yeah. Does that I like it? You what? I like it. You love it. You more than like it. You, you love it. So you're very fulfilled. At 102 degrees, is that like, is it, warm, is it like how you would feel at 102 degrees in this reality? Would it be like you have the flu or something? No, uh, actually your body temperature goes all the way up to 240 before, uh, oh. yeah. Before so like you feel like you have a fever? Yeah. So you're freezing cold? Yeah, you're freezing cold all the time. So you're doing it as much as you can. <laughs> Cursing people left and right. Yep. I have a question about yes, the second uh, scenario. All right, Ducky. Shooting my body temperature, I kill, whatever, over 140 people, was it? Sure. 240. If, it goes, if my body temperature goes over 240 degrees, and I keep killing people, I get hotter and hotter, is anyone offended if I ski in the nude? <laughs> I feel as if Scott the snow and the breeze upon my nude body would only cool me down. I think we're all offended by you skiing in the nude. Agree to disagree. Uh, I closed the floor for questions! Why didn't you warn anyone? Oh, sorry. All right, we're going to vote. Mitch. Mike Mitchell, how do you vote? Uh, I, I'm going to go with the scenario where you curse someone because I just wouldn't curse anyone. I would live an uncomfortable life like I do now, kind of. <laughs> where you're just freezing cold your entire life? <laughs> Very cold constantly, yes. What kind of life is that? I don't know. I like it cooler, so it doesn't bug me too much. You wouldn't kill anyone if, if you had the chance? No, 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 no. What? I really like <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. I... Do you think? And this is a serious question. Do you think, even though you don't want to do it, uh, do you think you will kill someone before the end, the end of your life? Maybe. How do you think it'll happen? Probably wrestling or something. Wrestling? <laughs> like goofing around and then you accidentally snap. Goofing around, neck. I snap. <laughs> like a real, real of mice and men style. <laughs> <laughs> All George, right, Ducky. Funny George. How do you like to vote? I'm going to vote for the chafed elbow. The chafed elbow, really? Indeed. Why is that? Because... Why is that the detail that's uppermost in your mind? Yeah. Of that scenario. It came out late, but it's stuck in your mind. <laughs> no, I had that thought right away. Yeah. I, because I would never want to offend anyone with my nude body. You made me feel bad about it. And I don't ever want to do that. I'm sorry, folks. 
That's the response I was looking for. Thank you very much. All right, great. John C. Riley, how do you vote? You know, voting is... It's a oh, privilege. It's a right and a privilege, yeah. <laughs> and I take it seriously. And I wish I could talk this over with my wife and kids. And your pastor? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that guy's going to say. <laughs> I guess I like the idea of, you know, Cursing people, it's very magical. It puts me in mind of Search of Freak, the vampire's assistant. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you said, like, when I'm elbowing those people, and even though I'm getting hurt through my body armor, you said I love it. It's like, if you're happy in work, you're happy in life. So I gotta go with that. Happy wife, happy life. That's right. Your wife is very unhappy in this situation. She ought to start elbowing with people and exploding them like I do. I love it. Wow. All right, well, let me tally up the points. Did Mitch uh, vote? What? Mitch voted. I voted, right? I you voted, voted first. Yeah, I, did. I voted second. No, you were first. Oh, I was first, yeah. <laughs> it's been a long day. I know. Really, it's five in the afternoon. <laughs> There's a lot more to come, my friend. <laughs> I hate to be the first person to break it to you. <laughs> You're like a little bear who wants to hibernate. <laughs> Please get me in my cave. Hey, do you notice that those bears on the Charmin commercial? Like, their lives are changing. Like, when they first started, they were bears in the woods that used toilet paper. That was weird, okay. Now they have a house and they wear clothes. I mean, when you start with toilet paper. What? I don't know where this is headed and what it means for the human race. They just want more modern conveniences. iPhones, flying cars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's tally up the points. John, your tail has touched me. You are a winner. Oh! Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. You guys are awesome. And you are granted this power henceforth. What? I have the power to curse people? No, you're breaking people's... Oh, that's the thing I love. That's right. <laughs> I'm hungry. But if you want to try cursing someone, you can. All right. Uh, I curse you. Oh, wow. Ducky. Oh, sound guy. Just... Oh, wow. You just narrowly dodged. Sorry, Stu. Sorry, bro. See you in a year. <laughs> really? You're going to be here for it? Why not? Hey, let's agree. They'll all be back here one year from yeah, today. Yeah, why don't we? Why don't we? It's a date. We'll watch the sound guy explode. Yeah. <laughs> Forgive me. Spontaneous look above. There, there's something that I would love to do. Uh, I, I, we have... Uh, a guest up here who has uh, you so seldom have a guest that has a signature theme song Frank Sinatra had New York, New York Tony Bennett left his heart in San Francisco Ducky Powell sings very well <laughs> I would love to hear you sing your signature song <laughs> is that the song. name of your album? <laughs> <laughs> Ducky S Powell sings very well it's, it's a shot of me in this suit lying down in a bearskin rug yeah. There's actually a period after sings. It's like, Ducky Powell sings. Very well. well. <laughs> Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Would Ducky? you sing us a bit of your song for us? I could sing the whole thing if you like. Not what I had in mind, but okay. <laughs> Great. And this is a song about... This is a song, well, it's a song I used to sing with my dad. He was a gnarly little ski dude in his own right. And, uh, well, we lost him three years ago when he went... Rocketing off a tasty little trail, never to be seen again. So, Dad, whatever slope you're thrashing now, this is for you. Oh, very good. I see gnarly trails, fresh powder too. I grab bits of air. So 
tasty, it's true. And I think to myself, what a thrashable slow. All my ski buds are grabbing tasty air. There are smiles on their faces as they pop nasty flare. I see gnarly back scratchers and tasty daffies too. What they're really saying is skiing fucking rules. I munch tasty powder. I'm talking about snow. There's so many trails that I'll never go. And I think to myself, what a thrashable slow. <laughs> <laughs> and I think to myself, what a nasty, tasty, most thrashable slope indeed. Indeed. Thank you, everyone. Pray for my Ducky Pal! Thanks to Ducky Pal! Well, we, we just have one more guest here on the show, uh, and i got to look up his information. Uh, we spoke to him once before, at least I did. Uh, I can't recall if either of you uh, have met him. I didn't, uh, I, I didn't obviously, know. you uh, do not know him, but uh, he is a um, salesman. He sells hay. Uh, please welcome Calvin Redding. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> Don't be so excited. There's not much to be excited about these days. Your nose is so clogged up. <laughs> the, the pressure in my nose is going directly from each nostril all the way to the back of my head. I can barely see straight because of these allergies, but I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Have you tried Claritine? <laughs> I've tried them all. Every spray and pill you can think of. I, you know, I've gone to the generics recently just because, you know, I'm saving money on these things that don't work. So I want to talk, maybe I'll do my plug section up top. You have something to plug? Yeah, I got a hay business I want to plug. We spoke to you before in Chicago, was it? That's right. And what were your details again? I'm sorry. Did yeah, you what say, are your details? You, you said you have a hay business? <laughs> that's, that, that's exactly right. May I just say, yeah. if you haven't got a hay business, then God bless you. <laughs> I sell hay. <sighs> <laughs> well, this is how it's been going in Australia for me. <laughs> trying to sell hay to these people is like trying to sell, mm, I don't know, a carpet to someone who does not need one. <laughs> People don't need hay here in Australia, Claudia? No, we why? don't need hay at all. We've got um, sand and grass, and that's all we want. <laughs> you this don't was want my, any. This we was like my misfortunate well, step. But not hay. Do you well. have, like, like bones? Bones? Bones, like where a cow lives? Oh, but, uh, where Burns? Are, like, are you burned? Bones? Like a bone, like a foam? Bone. Foam? A foam burn? Bone. Do you have a foam with chickens? A phone with chickens. Foam, like a foam with a foam works. Well, I don't know, even oh. know how they'd work the buttons on that thing to call. <laughs> no, a foam, like a wet oh, bone. A, a foam with chicken? Yeah, oh. where well, you need hay. Yeah. You, you do, have so that? You have one? Because I've got a whole suitcase <laughs> with stuff i got to show you. We have a farm with chickens, but we feed the chicken grain. Uh, chickens do detail. All right. Corn-fed chickens. This was a grain. mistake. I should I, not I be in this country. I think they eat chicken feed. So you, you, you sell hay. That's right. I'm trying to break this down. You sell break hay. I sell hay. You're allergic to it, it seems. That's right. And I carry two suitcases with me all the time. That doesn't seem like enough hay to sell. 
Like if people wanted some hay. Yeah. Although at the same time, he's never sold any, so it's almost more than he can sell. <laughs> I've never sold any down here in Australia. I do okay. Remember, I do okay in the U.S. So you sell just enough hay to get by. To get by. I have a question for this hay monger. Yeah. Uh, in, your, in your suit in case, is it, is it merely the hay samples or is this the finished product? No, I've got folders with schematics and pie charts of where the hay is coming from, how we're getting it to you, how much is it going to cost you? That's a big question a lot of people have when I'm talking about selling them hay. What's this going to cost me, they always say. I say, well, all right, well, let me find it here in the folder. I have numbers for you to look at. How much hay do you need? Then that's my question. They come back to me with a specific amount of bail, a number of bales, usually in the hundreds that I look at. It's a graph sort of thing. I'll find that number. It's, you know, hundred, you know, 300. Oh, found it. Then I'm, then I'm going right on the schematic to find the price. Soon after I find it, I deliver that news vocally to the person. <laughs> and in this country, I'm hearing a lot of, I actually don't need any. Thanks for wasting my time and your own, idiot. So did you go out today and try to sell hay? Yeah, here was my whole thing. I, I, was, I came down here and I said, all right, this is a country. <laughs> I made that distinction in my mind. And I said, all right, I'm going to sell these people, you know, hay for Halloween, for hay rides. This, I'm oh, going to make no, a fortune no, no, here. No, 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 we don't. Yeah, they don't have Halloween here. That's what I find out we every don't... single place I go. What's that a hay ride? <sighs> It hurts, you know, it doesn't not hurt when people ask me that. It this is your hurt. livelihood. This if is people don't I, know what hay rides it's are. It's my livelihood, but it's not what I care about most. But it is my livelihood. What do you care about most? Uh, well, I do like the Harry Potter movies. <laughs> um, I almost I, feel like we I'm should in, talk about them. Huh? Huh? <laughs> My this, ears are so clogged up. Who is your this, favorite character? Oh, sorry. No, I'm just... There's nothing in your life that you care about more than the Harry Potter films. That was just one on the list. Oh, I, I do beg your pardon. I'm sorry. If, if you the said sorting, it so immediately, I thought this is the most important thing in this It's the highest life. on the list, but it's not the only thing on the list. <laughs> so it is the thing you care about the most. I guess when you put it like that, yeah. It is, well, it's do, you, do, do, do you have a family? I do. I have a brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have, like, a sibling who's married to him? Well, uh, not to bring the room down, but I used to. <laughs> I said not to bring the room down. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, she, uh, well, my sister, you know, she got, uh... Uh, let's just say, um... What? I'm not going to say by what, but she got run over. <laughs> I, I feel like if you were to say what she got run over by... Then, the, you know, these people, are, uh, we don't want to hear that. We're leaving. Well, you, 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 we're, so, you said the worst part. I, th I don't think you need to conceal the identity No, because the these vehicle. people might drive cars, and they might say, well, I don't want to be the person to run over someone in my car. It was a car, you know, that she got really run over. She was, we were at a NASCAR event. Oh, a really fast it, car. It, no, it, no. It, this, was this a race car that drove over her? It was a NASCAR event at the local mall. They were, you know, Tom Petty was there to do autographs. Tom Petty? Sorry, Richard Petty. Was Tom Petty there, though? He was there in line two behind me. Was that and exciting? He, what? Was that an exciting feeling? Not for me. If it was for my sister, she loves him. Loved. I should say loved. She, I got to get used to that. It was, it, was it recently? Huh? Did she pass recently? It was. When was this? This was right before I left for this trip. <laughs> I said, can we just please do the funeral like today? I'm leaving <laughs> so, very soon. That's so insensitive. I know, but we get it. We did it. We got it done. <laughs> 
It was the fastest funeral you've ever seen. It was quick, really? Huh? How fast was it? <laughs> that, Did you that say felt some... like some sort of setup. Did you say a secret word? How fast How was fast it? How fast was it? Ah, <laughs> uh, lightning does not strike twice. Oh, well. Hey, Monga, may I ask you... Uh, yes. On the flight to... Are you saying, hey, non <laughs> Uh What? Hey, non I'm saying, hey, Monga. Oh, my mistake. It's a strange thing. <laughs> On the flight uh, to this country, uh, presumably from America... Yeah, maybe. Illinois. Uh, what did you watch on the plane? I was trying to watch some of the old Ab Fab episodes. <laughs> it was from 2006, this one was from. I said, I'll give it a shot. I turned it on, and there's a laugh track on it that I didn't appreciate. So, <laughs> I turned to the person next to me and said, Is the, can I borrow your headphones just for one second? Because they were watching the same thing. But they were watching it, you know, about 15 seconds ahead of me. So I'd see kind of what's happening, and I <laughs> did not appreciate that. I borrowed a, the person next to me, uh, I, who I later learned his name was Reba. <laughs> was wearing corduroy shorts on a plane, I, which I've never seen before. I said, for such a long flight, maybe you get cold. And she said, you know, I tend to run hot. And I said, okay, explain the sweater. She's wearing an Eddie Bauer sweater. <laughs> And she said, I, my legs run hot. I can't explain it. My husband, you know, thinks it's the funniest thing in the world. Uh, was Ray, he on the plane? Ray was, he was not on the plane. Why not? I don't know. I don't really know them. <laughs> so I borrowed her headphones. <clears throat> and... Where I do wanted, you think he was? Well, I have a suspicion that he may have had his own business trip that he had to go on. Because she, she said something effective. Oh, he's meeting with clients, you know, and he oh, couldn't so you, make you it. you know where he was? No, because she didn't say he, he flew somewhere. He's meeting with clients that I'm thinking at home? <laughs> hmm. What does he do? I didn't want to ask. Have you ever had a business meeting at your home? Right now I'm staying at an Airbnb. Oh, here in, uh, in Australia, you mean? No, just overall in your whole life. Have you ever had a business meeting in no, your I home? No, I usually do it either at uh, my office or someone else's home <laughs> or farm. I did one at a restaurant. I went to... Uh, uh, I don't know if this reference is going <laughs> to connect with anyone here. Uh, Applebee. No. No. No? no. Apple, Apple, it, Apple B? Apple B's. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I had a client who I was supposed to meet out in, uh, they were uh, you know, down rural route 34. This won't connect with anyone here. <laughs> and I said, fine, I, you know, I can't make it out uh, that, that this early, you know, this late in the day. So uh, is there any restaurant near you that we could be? They said, Apple B's. I said, I, I actually, I haven't eaten dinner yet. We met there. I had a. Uh, it was a salmon. It was like you know, like a glazed salmon type thing. I don't know if any of this is going to translate to you salmon. people. It's sort of yeah, like a. Uh, I want to say a maple glazed salmon, crusted. I don't know. The French fries were great. And I forget exactly what he had. His name was. If you were in Illinois, would this really connect with people? <laughs> You know, I don't know if they'd find the story interesting, but they know rural, the, the route I was talking about. <laughs> and they might have an interesting story to then tell me about it. Oh, yeah. But How is it you've been out here ten minutes? And you... And I still haven't gotten to... Haven't said a single interesting thing. <laughs> that, that seems impossible as a human being. I don't know if that's true. Does everyone feel that way up here? Let's take a poll. Uh, Tracy? Uh, you're boring as fuck. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I never swear. I never swear. I'm really Claudia, sorry. Claudia, what are you... I think you have potential to be a really interesting guy, but at, right. so far you haven't 
being interesting. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. Lord Andrew? Well, I, I quite like the part where it was revealed that Tom Petty was in line to see Richard Petty. <laughs> Seems like oh, we wait. could have built on that and followed yeah. up on that. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. That was so quickly abandoned. And then you were going to tell us how your sister died, but now we're hearing about some maple salmon. <laughs> yeah, we skipped around a little bit. Well, well, how did your sister die at the NASCAR? I want to hear more about Absolutely Fabulous. I also thought you were going to watch Harry Potter films on the plane. <laughs> Liz, I, I'm sorry, I'm skipping around. I'm a little tired. I was involved in a... Um, there was a bank robbery the other day. I was actually involved in... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So, between, from the robbery, which was on, a, on Friday, Friday afternoon. You did the Wait, robbery? what do you mean? Yeah. I was involved in a robbery, if you could believe it. Were I you went, held up? Were you a wobble? I was, well, here's what, I was in the bank, of course, you know, that was eventually robbed. So I'm... By you? I was involved. <laughs> I'm waiting in line, you know, because at this point... Uh, yeah, I've got a pocket full of this, uh, these 50 cent tokens that they have here. And I said, I gotta boil this down to, to paper money. I'll do it here at the bank. And so I walk in, and there's a line, of course, I'm talking to uh, Faye, I, a woman named Faye, I come to find out. <laughs> who, who had an L.L. Bean coat like mine, and I said, I have the same thing back in... Please Florida. just get to the interesting part! <laughs> Please! Please. All right, let me let me skip ahead uh, to the so I get to the teller finally, finally to the teller, and I'm pulling out the coin one, two, three, up to boy, there must have been twenty, <laughs> and about ten dollars worth. That's what. Well, we never got that far because all of a sudden it's doors kicked in. Put your hands up, and it's guys in. Who you know, did that? Filming. You did that? No, no, and behind me. I hear this behind me. Guys in masks. And these are, you, these are your friends, your co-workers that you're robbing the I had the no with? idea who they were, and I also, I couldn't see who they were because of the masks. All wearing canvas vests, except one had a bubble Patagonia vest. I took note of that. You really into, like, outdoorsy fashion. <laughs> Anyone wearing, like, Timberlands or? Uh, well, no, I, could, I didn't know because he's, they said, put your hands up, and I did, and my eyes went up with my hands. <laughs> As I think is pretty natural. Because every you look up to make sure you're not going to jam your hand into a low fan. It's but, true. No, but don't you? It's true. It's very difficult not to raise one's hands without casting your eyes skyward. Yeah, right. But don't you you have like to really you, concentrate. You exactly. would want to look forward because you might get hurt by these robbers? Like, you don't want to take your eyes off of them. You do for a second. You, do, you want it just for a second. You... <laughs> I guess I've never been robbed. I don't know. Were you scared when you were robbed? I'm terrified. You know, I'm, I'm shaking like a, a, you know, a leaf. <laughs> and <laughs> they start, you know, rounded everyone. They, they round us up into sort of a ball right in the middle of the room. A circle. A ball. A ball. <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody, you know, uh, would be... Hero I'm hits going, the... I'm sorry. I, they I'm, very, I'm very sorry. Yeah? I'd like you to go into detail <laughs> about this ball. <laughs> was it like a haystack of people? No, not, not exactly. It was a hay ball of people. Well, it wasn't was it bound. I think if it was bound, I would have agreed with you that it was more of a bale. Oh. But it was not bound because they didn't have rope. So how'd they get you in a ball? Just kind of pushed aside. So it was like a... It was... It, what happened was they said you, to this to Faye, get over there, right there. And she, they pushed her, and then they started pushing other people. You, you know when you see a... Uh, you, do, you know when you see a, the, the... You could YouTube video of like a Bon Jovi concert opening up in the 80s. Like they, no! they opened the gates... <laughs> To a Bon Jovi concert, no, the first people none of us. In. There is not a single person in here who has ever seen a YouTube video of an opening of a John Bon Jovi concert. Well, it looks like you know the first stages of what would then become a mosh pit, the grudge. Oh. 
But it's people rushed and pushed onto each other. This so, is sort of what so happened. What did, they, what did they do? They fell on top of each other. We're all no, falling on top of each other. No, the lavas. Oh. <laughs> they, they got some money. They went to the back and took two sacks of money each. It's all I could hold. Because I guess, I guess somebody, well, they didn't have their backpacks with them. <laughs> Come, I'll tell you about that as the story progresses. It still has to progress? It, it's, it still needs to start. <laughs> it's still it in the nascent started. stages? Oh, well, yeah. So I'm, I'm coming off the top of the pile like, I got to get off these people. I start to fall, trip backwards a little bit because my shoe uh, was untied. I'm tripping. And then these guys are rushing out of the hole, the, out of the door, you know, to get in. Well, what I, would, I used to get into the bank, we're now going out of it. We know how doors work. Right. <laughs> and we're all in agreement, doors. It's, yeah, probably everyone, most of you probably got used the door to get in here tonight. <laughs> Pushed back. I got sort of swept up with these guys. Next thing I know, I'm outside on the sidewalk with them, and it's yelling time for these guys. <laughs> go, 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 get, you know, get into the car. I don't think they realize. I said, I'm not with you guys. I'm not. But it was, I'm in there, and I'm in the front what? seat, driver's side, behind the wheel. <laughs> Keys tossed into my lap. Uh, sort of... I just am amazed that you talked about your allergies for so long. It, I could barely breathe. They're killing me. Where did you... Did you end up driving them somewhere? Yeah, but I don't know where I was going, you know, because I don't know the streets here. They all crisscross and go every which way. Were you this able to drive on the... What? This happened here. This was on Friday at Sydney. Are yeah. we able to drive on the left side of the road? Not very well. <laughs> And also, my head is so clogged up, my sense of direction is out the window. So we're going down this street and then back up this street. And they said, where are you going? I don't know, guys. You know I'm not with you. They finally realized none of us. I didn't know any of them. And, if, and I, I did steal a moment, though, to say, how come this guy's wearing a bubble vest? And that's what I knew. Jake, his a a name ended up being Jake. Jake is not a close friend with these guys. And he didn't do the right bubble, he didn't do the right vest, and he did not bring the backpacks. What's a bubble vest? Uh, uh, it's a vest, usually nylon with uh, down. Like in the puffy ins- vest. That's right, a puffy vest. I've never called it, they kept saying bubble called vest. a bubble <laughs> vest before. I've never they said that. bubble vest, you know, kept saying bubble vest. I said, all right, this is an Australian thing. I'll go with it. It's not. Well, then, talk to these guys. I don't know what to tell you. And then what happened? So there I am, I, and I'm speeding. I'm going, because I don't know. I do things miles per hour where I'm from. <laughs> this is all in kilometers. I see we're in a, you know, I don't know, 60 kilometers. Does that make sense to anyone? It's 60. <laughs> but I'm going way faster than that. And at this point, I start chit-chatting. What are you guys going to spend the money on? Uh, so you feel kind of relaxed. I feel like I'm in the group now. And they, they said, oh, that was so much like uh, the, the movie Heat. You ever seen Heat? Yeah. The guy in the back, high five me. Because Heat was such a great movie. They all said, I, and I turned around. And I said, guys, uh, you'll never believe this. I've never seen Heat. I said, did you see, uh, you know, the prisoner of Azkaban? <laughs> they had not seen that. <laughs> they didn't, they hadn't seen it. They hadn't seen it. None okay. of them, one of them thought they saw the beginning of Sorcerer's Stone. I said, that, great, good, fine. You probably saw an owl. Uh, I'm talking about the prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> and they said, well, we're talking about heat. And I said, all right, just, where's the next turn? Wait. <laughs> Like, the bank robbers who are saying this is just, like, the heat. There's, like, a million movies about robbing banks that they... I but they like... seem to like heat. 
The Heat. Heat? The Heat? The Heat is a different film. Heat is what uh, they were yeah. talking about, I think. Oh, right. Robert oh. De Niro. Robert De Niro, like, Al Pacino. About a bank was... robbery. Oh. Right. Right. Yeah. Michael Mann directed. Michael Mandarin? Michael Mann directed. directed. Oh, I see. Sorry, I know this is so stuffed. <laughs> All right, look. So what? Uh... <laughs> People in the crowd are standing. People in the crowd. <laughs> Hey, I, you know, I, if they can leave, I don't care. <laughs> no, I care. I care. I don't want them to leave. I want, I want you to go out on a big finish. Okay. I want to hear about the end of this story. Okay. And then at which point... We want you to get everyone on their feet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they'll give you a tippy-toe ovation. Okay. Okay, good. It's very rare. <laughs> Finally, we get to what they are calling their hideout, which is a garage. And I say, and they get out and still high fiving. These guys must have, you know, calloused hands or something because the amount of high fiving they're doing is unbelievable. I did, I could do about three to four of high fives, and I was done. Then. They said, okay, thanks for driving. Here's, you know, they gave me a $100 bill. I said, guys, that, that's, I feel bad about that. All I wanted was the, the, the I actually gave them, I ended up giving them the coins and they gave me the, the money. I, I left the place, got back to my Airbnb and said, this is not settling right. Those guys are nice guys, but I got to do something. I called the cops, uh, said, hey, you know, there was a, a, a Robbery, I was involved in it. <laughs> they said, were you the mastermind? I said, no, but I, you know, it was the driver. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me, I said, it was not my fault. And they said, well, we're, do you have any info? And I said, no, nah, not really. I mean, they were wearing, one guy had a bubble vest on. <laughs> uh, and look for a charcoal-colored uh, sort of a Dodge Ram. May have been a Dodge Ram. <laughs> you were at their hideout. <laughs> And you made your way back home from it. You could have told them about the location of the hideout. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like I'm saying, the, 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 the streets are so twisty and turny here. You could have left a trail of hay. <laughs> that would have been good. I don't have the hay with me. I, I sell it, you know, uh, out of the, f the suitcase. It's mostly schematic. <laughs> what I do is I set up an appointment for hay to be sent to you. Okay. So I wouldn't have been able to do that. I'm sorry. It's okay. Thanks. How does that work? Like, how do you send it? I'm not interested in the hay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the end of your story? The police said, okay, thanks, and hung up? Yeah, well... Yeah, and then on the news, you know, later that night, they got him. <laughs> they got him. They found the truck. Because of what you what said. What was the truck? The charcoal-colored truck. I think it was a Dodge Ram. <laughs> Ex extended cab. But it was because you told them what it was. Yeah, I guess so. That's like a big deal. Like, you helped them stop. Sure, I'm not looking for any awards or medals or anything. <laughs> All I want to do is sell some hay down here in Australia. <laughs> this is the biggest regret of my life. <laughs> You gotta jazz this story up, somehow. Oh, Faye was wearing pink Uggs. <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad detail. You've ruined Australia for me. <laughs> I certainly did not mean to do that. What? That took a half an hour. <laughs> Felt longer. Well, guys. <laughs> what do you say? I don't know, maybe go out of one of your songs? <laughs> yes. 
Why don't you start us off? <laughs> All right. Well, when the moon is up in the sky. When the. <laughs> are we making up a song? <laughs> yes, we are. Oh, did you did you did you mean one of my existing songs? Or my yeah, all right, but when you threw it back to me, I said I don't know your song, so I <laughs> no, I like your project better. Yes, you you begin. Sure, when the moon is then up, we'll go down. Da- we'll go down the line. We'll all and we'll end on you. It will end on me. Well, well, who's that. hosting this, Scott? Do you do you appreciate that? <laughs> I'll take anything at this point. <laughs> so wait, we're each singing a line of one song. Or we each sing our own song. No. <laughs> Why would we each sing our own song? He said we each take a tune. I, I, I suppose I thought it would be satisfying if we all made a song together. <laughs> rather I think it. we should have our own song. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. Majority rules. What if the song I wanted to sing was a line connecting to his song? That would be so strange if that were to happen, but I guess we could try it. I suppose it's up to the individual. And how about this? To make it interesting, we won't tell each other if we are contributing to a master song or if we are singing individual songs. We'll leave it to the audience to discover, along with ourselves, as it happens. But we should sing them all at the same time. I do not think we should do that. It would be expedient. <laughs> yeah. It would get it over quicker. Finish certainly. Really quickly. But I, I feel like people that. would enjoy it a little more were they to be okay. subsequent to one another. Subsequent it is. Thank you, Claudia. You want to start us off? I Whatever do. your name is. <clears throat> what was your name again? Calvin Redding. And you can find me on Hey Bill Redding uh, at Instagram.com. That's. That is your point of contact for your hay bale business. If you want to see the types of hays you could be purchasing, check me out there. Certainly. Yeah. All right. This is going to be a little... Well, you know the song, right? When the moon is high as the sky. And That's that. You could do a little more than that. What? You could do a little more than that. Uh, uh. And the stars are twinkling bright. Oh, just to have you by my side. It all just feels so right. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, baby, when we're cuddling. And you're right by my side. And you put it in like a hot dog in the bun. (laughs) That's, of course, when you're gonna come. When the moon is high in the sky and you're walking down the street with a pie. Because I'm Claudia. Claudia. Claudia of Glee. Midnight. We need to get to our next guest to try to restore order to the show. Good segue. <laughs> Great segue. Uh-huh. Um, he is, I, don't, I actually don't know his job. Um, I didn't ask him about that, but uh, I, I'm assuming that you will all recognize at least part of the name. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Justin Hoffman. Justin Hoffman. Hey, all right. Hey, Scott, how you doing? How are you? I'm good. Justin Hoffman. Yeah, that's right. How are you? That's my name. Let's all rearrange all of our... <laughs> Hello, J.W. I'm uh, J.W. Stillwater. Gino. This I is moved Gino. over here because I want people doing? to see Mr. Hoffman. I don't want anyone to miss out. <laughs> it's what he looks like. I don't want anyone to miss out. Any relation? To, 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 to Dustin Hoffman? <laughs> hey, he's my brother. I was, we were separated at birth. Separate your twins? We're twin brothers, sure. Siamese twins? Well, no, 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 no. We were just separated, you know, uh, being in the same room together. 
So you were in ne- the room next to him? Right. And then from that room, I was taken to an orphanage, and I went up to Madison, Wisconsin, where you I You can was just raised. cut to the orphanage part. You don't need to say every step. Well, we were talking about Siamese twins. I didn't know what we did talk about. That didn't get cut, and then I'm over here, and who's over where? How'd you get so- to Madison? You know, I was very young, but I think they put me on a bus. Just you by yourself on a bus? I think there was a, uh, a Catholic priest with me because he was taking me up there to, you know, an oh, orphanage. Well, good you're luck. Po- you're pointing at Gino because he had sex with a priest. That's right. I heard some of the show before. You did? Mm-hmm. What do you I think? Was, I think it's great. You know, you were talking about uh, the jerky boys before. <laughs> we were. You, s- you sound sort of <laughs> like one of them right now. <laughs> really? Don't we all? Don't we all? I don't. <laughs> I tried to, you know, when I was, I'm also in the entertainment business a little bit myself. Are you really? Are you an actor like your brother does? No, no. Well, you know, I try to do funny little things now and then, but it usually doesn't work out. Like for one, for instance, I was. And that's the entertainment business? (laughs) Trying to do funny little things? I tried to, you know, I tried to do my own Jerky Boys record. (laughs) Did you call it the Jerky Boys? (laughs) Oh, I call it the Phone Zone. And so, you know, I'd call up and say, you know. Yeah, I call up a, a suit maker or something and say, <laughs> "Let's let's try this out, Sam. A soup maker. Uh, suit maker, suit suit like a clothes oh, suit, right? Suit maker, a tailor. That's right." <laughs> I, I'd call How would this up. go? I'm a I'm a tailor. Uh, I'm going uh, about my business. Okay, you you pick up. Do do the rings, for ring, him. ring. Well, I, the phone see, is ringing. Should I be doing the ring or I'll do the rings. Okay, let's let's do the rings. All right, you're yeah, gonna I'll do the rings. What are you gonna do? Well, I don't know. He got the rings. Do you want the rings? Why don't you I'll, be my I'll, assistant? I wouldn't mind. Oh, be the tailor's assistant? Yeah, come on over. All right. Yeah, you're like the scissor holder or something. All right, I'm, I'm still the rings, away. though, now. Okay. Cisco, my scissors. Here's your scissors. You're making that garment too tight. It's going to be right, obscene. I'm dialing up the phone. <laughs> Good thing the phone is not ringing, eh, Cisco? <laughs> I hate when that phone ring. rings. Uh-oh. Oh. Ring, ring. Ring. Ring, ring. Well, our moment of solace is at an end. Shall I pick up the phone, Cisco? I don't care. I love it. You've been Icona Pop by the best. Damn. <laughs> oh, well, it looks like they hung up. <laughs> All right, let me, dial, well, let me redial I here. tell you, this is not going to be a good record. I know, because no one ever picked up half the time, but sometimes they would. <laughs> I guess we're done doing this. Why, why was it? Ring. That be- oh, ring, oh, that ring. Phone ring. Oh, I'm being sucked back <laughs> in. No, 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 that's a bad tailor. If he's just going to The phone doesn't ring anymore. He goes, sits him down. Ring, ring, ring. Cisco, get the phone for me. <laughs> ring. Why do I have to get the phone? Oh, I'll your, get it. I'll ring. get it. Your I'll name's get. on the door. Ring. I pay you a salary. Ring. Hello. Hey, yeah, what the hell are you doing over there? I brought my suit in, and now where is it? It was supposed to be ready on Friday. What's he saying? He's saying that he brought a suit in, and it's supposed to be ready on Friday. Oh, he's lying. You're a liar. Hey, don't call me that, uh, you know, Cheeto chest. <laughs> Cheeto chest? Hey, okay, come on. I brought a suit over there with uh, black and white checks, and I want you to take all the black checks off. He's saying you bought a black and white checkered suit, and he wants us to make it completely white. Well, that's impossible. That's impossible. You're a liar. Goodbye. Hey, oh, God. Ring, Jesus Christ. Ring. Hey, I ring. need uh, tomorrow off because I got to go to a wedding. Right, I'm redialing Who's getting married, here. Cisco? It's my aunt. You seem to always be going to weddings. Ring. Well, I have a large family. Ring. And this is my auntie who practically ring. raised me. Ring. And she's, fi- she's been a widow for so many years. She's finally getting a husband again. Ring. I have to say, Cisco, that your grandmother has died four times. Ring. I had four working. grandmothers. Ring. Okay. Ring. Now I have none. Ring. You better not have another You're one. You're a cruel employer. Ring. You have to work on Christmas, Cisco. What? Ring. They suck some out of a Dickens movie. Yeah, Ring. Dickens movie? Oh, you You're don't... fired. <laughs> I quit. I don't like this job anyway. <laughs> Ring. All right. So let, let me get this straight. This is what your, your album is? It was supposed to be just true, us but talking. No one ever would pick back up for me to then say, hey, you know, you just been on the phone zone. You want to get a send over release? Were you setting up a hidden microphone in the businesses so you heard all that stuff that we were doing? No, that was, I mean, I could see it here on stage for sure. I don't, after the phone is, you know, hung up, I have no idea. They, these people turn into ghosts to me. But if you... If, That's macabre. It, it is. It's, 
<laughs> Tough business. That's a very terrifying thought that when you're I talking mean, to a stranger on the phone, and then when you hang up, they turn into a ghost. <laughs> You know, they mean nothing to me anymore. There's no contact. Let me ask you a you, question. You you're a cold man. You, you can't see the people behind you right now, right? No. Do, do you think there are people, or do you think it's a bunch of ghosts? Uh, you know, do a little chuckle back here. All that right. sounds a little ghosty to me. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't so great. I'm assuming there's a you know, visage back here of a, you know, sort of a wispy, waspy guy. <laughs> A waspy guy. Hey, you know, I sometimes I forget what that the word means. I just want to rhyme it sort of a wispy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah. So sometimes they wouldn't hang up, right? And you get to do the phony phone call. Sure. And then you say you ask them for the address so you can send over a release. Yeah, a release form because you can't just have people on the records without their permission. Right. So when this did happen. How many people signed the release form? We got, well, I sent out about five. You know, people said they were going to do it. You can't trust anyone because I didn't say I was going to pay them, so they would probably get the piece of mail, forget what it is, and throw it in the garbage. You only got through to five people? I got through to no people, but I sent out five <laughs> lists. Eh, not lists, you know what I mean, pieces of paper. You sent out five releases? That's right. To people that you did not talk to? No, no, wait a minute. We're getting confused. I talked to them. Okay, you did talk to them. The, you know, through to the point where I told them they were on the phone Congratulations, zone. Congratulations, you're on the, on phone, the phone zone. zone. You're going to be on a record if we can get this thing edited correctly. <laughs> right. How were you going to edit it? <laughs> I was talking to a guy. Well, that was a big problem, too. I called up a guy, an editing, you know, audio editor, and I sort of phone zoned him, too. <laughs> should we, you couldn't help, should help, help myself. You couldn't help yourself. You couldn't, couldn't resist myself. it. And then did you, did you have a successful phone zone with him? Hey, that was a pretty good one because, yeah, I got to the end of it, and again, I sent the release. But he didn't and he was like, it. I'm just going to edit this out. I look like a fool. Right. Right. But I, then eventually I had to call him and say, don't edit any of it. We can't do any of it. There's no releases here. So you have so far been completely unsuccessful. <laughs> that, that venture, sure. But you've oh, been very yeah, successful other, at others? Not very successful, <laughs> but I've tried other ventures. Such as? Such as, you know, these days I'll go around and look at people uh, with what clothes they're wearing. I see some great clothing here today, and I'll go up to them and say, Well, like, I, what clothing do you see here today that I you see a great think is great? I see a great T-shirt, a great gray T-shirt. I see a, what is this, yellow and black checks? <laughs> some, some might say plaid. There's a black hoodie back there. You know, I'll go up to nice clothes like this, <laughs> and I'll go to these people and say, I'll buy your clothes off you, and I'll sell them. <laughs> sell them. <laughs> You know, it's uh, the, the infant stages here. Oh, you just started doing this. Yeah, so what I'll do is in my backpack, I'll have a cheap pair of clothes that I'll get at the dollar store or something. And have something, because they'll say, most of the time people will say, I'm not selling you these clothes, I'll be nude in the street. And I said, nope, I thought of it. Looking at this backpack, what size are you? I got a white t-shirt and a sweatpant. You can have it. Do you, do you carry every size with you? I carry a medium large, extra large shirt and uh, just a pretty big sweatpant. <laughs> no smalls? No, on the, uh, no, on the t-shirts, no. Because I don't do kids' clothes. Well, these adult smalls. It's true. It's probably good you don't <laughs> go up to children and offer to buy no, their clothes this off isn't, of their I don't know what type of backpack you're picturing here. This is kind of just a little, little backpack. <laughs> well, I, but you have, you have one of each size. That's right. You might as well throw a small in there. Yeah, maybe I'll loop a small in the, you know, the strap or something, but it really, I'm up to capacity Why on this don't backpack. you get a bigger backpack? But to be fair... Again, I can get a bigger backpack if I buy some clothes and resell them. I don't, oh, you know. Fair enough. Chicken and egg, I understand. <laughs> I'm saying uh, someone who's a size small can wear a medium shirt, at least till they get home. They it's can, true. but it's going to look blousy. I think if you're... <laughs> Getting dollar store sweatpants out of a guy's backpack, you're kind of I already mean, down that route. In for a penny, in for a pound, I suppose. If, you, if you're going along with this scheme, you're probably not too concerned about how you're going to look getting from here to there. That's a big buy-in at the top. You've got to buy the clothes. You've got yeah. to buy the How much are you paying for these sweatpants? And... Oh, the sweatpants are from the dollar store, so they're a dollar. Okay. Um, a half a pound? What are we doing here? It's a, a U.S. dollar. I don't know. You figure it out, convert it. And then the t-shirts, you know, you can get a pack of, you know, six for, what am I paying, 
At the dollar store. No, this is a, I buy those at the Marshalls. The shirts what? cost you, more than the sweatpants? Why don't you buy the shirts at the dollar store? <laughs> because they don't sell them like that. They only sell the six packs that I like. Because it's a, it's a, a type of material I like, so I want to do that for the customer. So you buy a six pack of shirts, and in that pack is one medium, one large, one extra large. No, no, no. I got. I take one of each and put them in the backpack, and I've got spares at the house. Okay. And those, and those, I'm putting in, you know, a plastic bin. Let, let me ask you this. So when you go up to someone and you say, "Hey, yeah. I'll, I'll see someone," I'll say, "Is that your jacket?" And then, I've heard, I have a friend who said that once. Is right. that your jacket? Yeah, she must have been from, you know, Will Matter or Julia. Oh, you assumed she was a woman. I, I, I yeah. said she. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I do apologize. I do not accept it, as I do not like you. <laughs> yeah. I tried to be the bigger man, but it, it You turns ended out, up being the smaller man. It turns out I am the bigger man because you are a very small person indeed for not accepting my deeply felt apology. I hate you. <laughs> oh, I love you. We are enemies. We are friends. <laughs> well, Gino, I like you. Hey, I'm, I'm on the fence. I don't really know much about you, but... <laughs> well, Gino's bisexual, by the way, so how yeah. do you feel about it? Hey, this could work out. <laughs> what? Why? Yeah, are I you know. I've been willing to try it. <laughs> that's how, look, that's how I went down this whole path. Right. I'm just, you know, a little open-minded. You so seem what, like a happy guy. Once you announce that the person is wearing a jacket, you ask them, is it your jacket? Is that your jacket? And they, then they have to confirm <laughs> How yes many times no. do they say, this is not my jacket? <laughs> not many, but you don't ever want to get in a situation where you're talking all the way just about to make a sale, and the person says, well, hold on, I can't even, this isn't mine. I'm not gonna it's not get mine to sell. Yeah. I understand. I'd feel, uh, you know. <laughs> so let's like say this is idiot. one of those sales where it's going the right way. The person is wearing the clothes that they own. <laughs> what happens next? And I, I subtly, as subtly as I can, say, I'm not a creep. <laughs> how, how subtle can you do it? You got to put your hands out to show them you're not holding anything creepy. Such as? Uh, you know, uh, a gun or a knife or a snake or something. <laughs> you know, the creepy, uh, creepy crawly thing. So not only creepy things like where you would be presumed creepy, but things that creep as well. That's right. Okay. That's right. Centipede. Centipede, if you know, if you can catch one of those things, you can do it. Caterpillar, right? Well, millipede, millipede, for sure, for sure. Inchworm. Yeah, and you keep if you, with the millipedes and the spiders, you gotta keep them in a jar. Wait, but you are keeping these things, <laughs> so sometimes you are holding them. I have those at the house. <laughs> Just jars and jars of bugs. Hey, yeah, sure. <laughs> and loose T-shirts in a plastic bin. <laughs> those are in the bin. <laughs> the plant, the T-shirts are in the. How plastic big is bin. your place? It's not bad. You know, Dustin pays for half of it, so I get a pretty decent size. <laughs> your brother Dustin Hoffman pays for half of your place. Right. So I got a big, you know, uh, three, four bedroom apartment. <laughs> Where you're keeping... Three or four? You're not possible. <laughs> it's depending I on... I haven't opened one door in there. <laughs> Could be a bathroom. I don't know. <laughs> the place, you know, the, the, the place is brand new. I haven't been to all the doors. You haven't been through all the doors. You know, sometimes I... you're not sure if a door is a real door just painted on the wall. Like, that could be another bedroom, for all I know. Wiley Coyote style? <laughs> yeah, that's right. See, we having fun. Yeah, we're good. We're good. I like you again. I, I've always liked you. <laughs> so, so say she does want to sell you her jacket. How much do you offer for that jacket? Sure. Well, I, I put it in their court first. What's that? I oh, put you put it ball. in their court yeah, first. I put the ball, okay. the, you know, the Okay, basketball. so say, say Gino is the, the woman with the jacket. Sure. Uh, I'm hey. a lady with a jacket. All right, sure. let's, see, and I'm let's just see how this goes. Bitching about some bullshit, you know? <laughs> you I can't find yourself? my fucking cell phone again or something. Okay, okay. <laughs> do, you, do you do this seated from behind them or do you. No, do no, I'm, now I'm gonna stand up. Okay. Oh, where the fuck is my phone, huh? <laughs> Excuse me, are you whistling at me, sir? What's that? <laughs> You see, you never want to. You want to kind of do something non-threatening, like whistle and run your uh, hand around in the air in a circle. That seems very threatening to me. <laughs> I know it's it's weird, but it's not that threatening. Um, sometimes I find that weird behavior feels like threatening behavior. Like in someone's mind, in their mind, they can jump to this guy's got problems. What else is he gonna? Yeah, do? that's where my mind jumped to right away. That's when the hands go out. Oh. 
And the millipedes go away. <laughs> the millipedes are, you know, don't bring them up. Don't even talk about them. I was scared for a minute there, but then I saw that your hands are empty. That's right. No so guns, I'll... snakes, or via knives. <laughs> okay. Is that your jacket? Um, yes, this is my jacket. Why? Well, you know, without sounding like a creep. Remember the hands? Your hands are really sweaty. <laughs> uh, I'm nervous. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't find you creepy. You had a question about my jacket? Yeah, I want to know if I can buy it. Uh, yeah, I got it at uh, Ann Taylor Loft. It, it was 70 euros. Hold on a euros. second, hold on a second. Now, does I, this happen? This probably happens often, right? They people think, think I want to go to the store they buy. You want to buy an identical jacket. I want to buy, you don't, know, right, exactly. That's what they think. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, please proceed. So that's your jacket. I want to buy it. You want to buy... That one you're wearing right there. Now, you're probably wondering about the backpack. <laughs> I wasn't, but now I am. Sling off the backpack, show them what's going on inside. Oh. You see, you look like maybe a... That thing's filled almost to the top. <laughs> I can barely get the zipper done, you know, because the teeth are sort of pulling apart. <laughs> Got an XYZ. <laughs> BDQBIL. <laughs> so, why are you showing me your backpack, sir? <laughs> because if you agree to buy, <laughs> you agree to sell me your jacket, you're going to need something home so air hole. So you want to give me a pair of sweatpants in exchange for a jacket? Now, at this point, you got to explain, since I'm not interested in the pants or the skirt, I'm going to... I am wearing pants and a skirt. <laughs> the sweat... That was a look for a while. Uh, that yeah. was a look for a while. Like three months. I remember Sarah McLaughlin did it in a video. So, and she got on her dog kick. That's right. She's singing about them wet dogs. <laughs> Those are some of the most depressing music videos going around these days. You know, I so met her at the hook after party. <laughs> Dustin took me to the hook party. And you met you Sarah, met McLaughlin? Sarah McLaughlin? McLaughlin? That's right. She was there. Back in 1991? She was young. <laughs> she was like in junior high? <laughs> yeah, she was there when uh, she won a contest to come. <laughs> so, this yeah. is the story. <laughs> <laughs> you met Sarah McLaughlin before she was famous. Mm -hmm. She's just a kid going to, she won a contest to see the Hook premiere. <laughs> and I remember there was a, you know, a little uh, pirate band playing. Sure. Just kind of off to the side. And right. There's, I'm, I don't know anyone because, you know, I'm not as famous as my brother, so I'm just leaning against a table. <laughs> high a table, table. All the way up there? <laughs> yeah, That's I was a sitting, high table. I was sitting down, but I was sort of leaning on the table. You know, because my body was lower, but my elbow was high. Oh, okay. And I, I you know, saw this. She's just sitting there watching the pirate band. I said, that's pretty good what they're doing up there. And she said, you know, I want to be a singer, singer, you know. Well, wh why don't we have, Scott, do you want to play Sarah McLaughlin? And we'll act Here we go, all right. Now, oh, we're yeah. within, now we're in a movie within a movie within a movie. <laughs> oh, hey, why don't we be the pirate band? <laughs> no, it sounds good. <laughs> Off to which side was that, was that pirate band? W where was the pirate band? Oh, yeah, yeah you're uh, right there okay. in the exact spot that they were at. <laughs> <laughs> I got one of them accordions up squeezing. It's, it's like you're squeezing a seal over there. <laughs> I was blowing in the jug. Can you say yeah. jugs? Is that a curse? No, that's all right. All right. Everybody likes jugs. Everybody. <laughs> hey, mister. I'm just a kid, so the table's up here for me. Hey, and I'm just sitting down, so it's at the same level. Boy, we got a lot in common. Yeah. My name's Sarah McLaughlin. How's that you like so? this pirate band over here? Yeah, I like them a lot. <laughs> meow, meow. Hey, I love the guy who plays the seal and the guy who plays the cat. Yeah, he's my favorite. This is the type of music I want to make. Also, songs about dead dogs. Well, geez, do you even have a good singing voice? You got to start there. Yeah, yeah. You want to hear it? Yeah. yeah. You'll be right there here with me. That's pretty All good. right, y'all. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break. But One please, more song. No, no, One sorry. more We're song. We're going to be back, but we please can't. continue to enjoy the Encore. Hook premiere party. Encore. No, thank you, little girl. But... <laughs> We, we're going to go on our union break. You piece of shit, you work for us. Hey, you little <laughs> nobody. Is that your jacket? 
I'm gonna be a big star. Wait, yeah, this is my jacket. <laughs> How why do you, uh, you have a backpack on? Uh, okay, here you go. See? Oh, Look, our hands is empty. There's no jaws of spiders. That's or right. No scorpions fucking each other or anything. All creepy. right, I presume you want to buy my jacket. Here That's you go. right. There we go. Thank you. Give her the t-shirt and sweatpants. Here's a t-shirt and sweatpants. You can put that all over. Oh, okay. Oh, look, sweatpants and a skirt. Oh, I see. Sweatpants and a skirt. This gives me an idea for a video. <laughs> Is that what happened? Yeah, then I said... Hey. That's how you got the idea? <laughs> I said, little girl, I mean, if you're not going to be doing that as your job because you want to be a singer, can I take that idea? It wasn't even her idea. It was the pirate bands. You ain't uh, giving this pirate band no credit at all. Well, he... <laughs> This pirate band inspired Sarah McLaughlin's singing career. I mean, that's and, huge. And one of your, not sure yet if it's successful, businesses. You stole this idea from them. You're a thief. I didn't sign a release or anything. <laughs> there, no piece of paper was mailed to me that I'm aware of. Uh, it's just an idea for grabs. <laughs> so afterwards, I went over there to see, uh, I bumped into Dustin. You know, he was done signing autographs. And I said, you know, that little uh, Sarah girl, she wants to be a singer. He said, that's pretty good. Good for her. That's pretty good. <laughs> you know, he gets so nervous at these events. Sure, when he's talking to his brother. <laughs> Long lost twin brother. <laughs> Who he's paying for his room and board. That's right. Half of it. Half, Half of it. To be fair. And I will never tell him I haven't been in all the rooms yet because he, you know... Well, you said the place was new. This is 1991? All the, all the houses he's bought for me in places, I've never been to the whole thing. <laughs> How many houses has he bought for you? Over the years? Yeah. I'd say four. <laughs> See, whenever I go into a new house, no matter whose it is, I go in every single room and walk the entire perimeter of each room. Just I, get a feel for the, you know. I tried to do that here. I ended up in some sort of kitchen. Yeah, the kitchen. Yeah. And they said, you know, you got to get out of here. You're, you're sweating all over the place. I said, that's fine. I just need to go to the green room. We were on such a high. What, what, well, are you what, doing? what part? What it's are you like, doing in Nottingham, Justin? Well, I'm over here trying to sell off some of uh, Dustin's old movie memorabilia. I got the, uh, you know, the wig from Tootsie there. and uh, The wig from Tootsie? Yeah, the red wig. Wow. Yep. If anyone here wants to buy it, we'll talk after the show. I got it, uh, you know, a backpack back there. <laughs> Is that a separate backpack? That's a separate one. Yeah, you know, I went out once with the wrong one. Switched them. <laughs> and someone wanted to sell you their jacket, and all you had was the red wig from yeah, Tootsie? I, I How did that go? Gino, go ahead, get on up there. <laughs> hey, hey, is that your jacket? Uh, yeah, it is my jacket. I got it at Ann Taylor Loft. My yep. twin sister has the same one. <laughs> say, say no more. See my hands, there's nothing creepy in them. Nope, just a pool I, of sweat and some long red hairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's from a different job. <laughs> okay. I wanna buy that jacket, I wanna buy, you know, right now, I wanna buy it right now. <laughs> Dude, totally, you can. I'm, I'm kinda warm and I'm, I need cash. Great. Well, don't worry, because I got, uh, I got, that's when I look in and I see it's just a red wig. And I, thinking on my feet, quickly, look at him and, at her, and say, you know what? Keep the jacket. Can I buy that hat? This hat? This yeah. is my father's hat. He gave it to me on his deathbed. Jesus. Cisco, Cisco, what are these people doing inside of our place? Hey, this is a business. You can't just come in here and do your own business. I was checking the doors of this big building here. <laughs> I wandered in. Cisco, Wait. where's the pirate band that you said you hired? Oh, they, they's right over there. What? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir, do you want to buy one of my wonderful suits? Uh, yeah, let me call you about it. <laughs> Can I get on the phone with you? Ring, ring, <laughs> ring. The phone, right. the phone. We should get to our next guest. Uh, he was in a uh, European rock band in the 60s. Please welcome John Lennon. John Lennon, yes. Okay. 
All right. <laughs> Hello. Hello, John. Well, I was going to say, welcome to be here. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> wait, wait, uh, have a seat. What's Thank going? you very okay. much. <laughs> I forgot. That's right. You're like a, a sitting I, vampire? I'm vampiric when it comes to sitting. <laughs> you have to be invited. Right. <laughs> but I won't bite your neck. Oh, please. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Uh, John, this is Ho Ho. Hello. Hi, Ho Ho. Did you ever give uh, 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 toys to John Lennon here? I wonder if he was a naughty kid. Oh, yeah. Well, do you remember what you got for Christmas growing up? Yeah, I remember I got a deflated soccer ball. <laughs> he was just a little bad. <laughs> and this is Dan Mangan. He's another musician. Hello, Dan. Oh, oh, a musician. I, that would explain the guitar. You know, I have a guitar of my own. It's fantastic. It's got to, do you ever use a whammy bar? I don't see one on there. You wouldn't on an acoustic, but that's musician talk. <laughs> I, I bet that half your audience has no idea what I'm talking about. They just tuned out right then. No the, whammies! <laughs> well, exactly. No whammies for me at the moment. My whammy bar connected to my guitar is at my friend's house. And are, are you more upset about the whammy bar? Normally people would say, my guitar is at my friend's house. You're like, my whammy bar is at... My whammy bar attached to an electric a Fender Stratocaster. Oh, guitar. good guitar. Oh, good British. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's at your friend's house. Who's your friend? My friend is my old drummer from my old band, and I haven't seen him. Oh, I've seen him recently, but he won't give it back to me, you know, the guitar. The band is? The band is the European band, the Beatles. <laughs> was, was. We don't tour anymore. <laughs> we don't even see two of them. <laughs> yeah. and, and the drummer's name is, too of course... Soon, man. Too soon. Right. Oh, the drummer's Ringo. Ringo Starr. Sure. One of the best drummers in the world. In my opinion. In, in a lot of people's opinion. Well, there's smart people then, whoever you're talking about. <laughs> my hamstrings are so tight from jogging this afternoon. You jog? This afternoon. You'd jog too if there was a guy with a gun. <laughs> hey. That's, that's bringing hey. back a lot of bad memories that's, for John. No, this is a part of my life I want to forget. You know, it was very uh, painful for me, uh, physically and emotionally. That when incident. you died? When I died, right. When I died, oh. If we could move on, uh, who's, whoever's hosting this could really move on. Oh, it's thing. me, but I, just so Dan knows what's going on, you were dead for four years. Four years, right. And I came and then, back alive in 1984 because I liked the title of that book. Did I have it? I've got to read it. I have it now. I've got a library card now, so I can go down and get it. When one. did you get the library card? Well, it's a little embarrassing. I got it back in October. Why don't you just buy the book? Mm, you know, sure, I have a lot of money, but purchases like that, where I can get it for free at the public library, it's, it's just not being smart with your money. <laughs> Plus, then you have a house with a book in it, you know, instead of a clean, nice, clean house. <laughs> right, you know, those. <laughs> that's a good point. You don't want too much clutter because then you get a book and then the next thing you know, you've got a tea set right next to it and then you, you oh, well, there's two things here. Why don't I just throw my coat down? <laughs> and the next thing you're emailing your friends, check me out uh, this week on Hoarders. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, what are you doing in Vancouver? I mean, I've seen you on several stops along the way here. Well, on the I'm tour. taking a little bit of vacation. Ringo and I split up from our fishing trip. He had to go back home. That's right. You were fishing in uh, Denver, Denver, yeah. Colorado. You have a fish shirt on that says Colorado. That's right. <laughs> it's a picture That's of a true. fish. Right, and he's got a hat on and a pipe in his mouth. That's funny. <laughs> How's he going to smoke underwater? <laughs> it's your target audience here. Yeah, no. <laughs> You could make shirts with any animal with anything in them. No, you can't. <laughs> I couldn't, but I'm, I'm sure somebody could. <laughs> so you and Ringo were in Denver. You were fly fishing. Right. Right, and you hurt your toe. I hurt my toe. I got stung by a bunch of bees, 30 or 40. <laughs> and we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't catch a thing. I'm uh, so sorry. Well, we had no idea what we were doing. I had the only bug we could catch, because you know you have to make a lure. I caught, though, I caught a butterfly. You caught a butterfly? That's, yeah. that, the degree of difficulty on that is very high. It was, well, it was tough, but I had a good net. 
Oh, okay. Not with the pole. With, an, with the net. Right. right. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I see what you I caught a blood butterfly with a net and then made a lure out of it. Okay, I see what you're saying. And you see what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, but we do understand. they see what she's saying? <laughs> that's not how you do that joke. What? It's just, that's what she said. <laughs> no, isn't it, you know, if someone says, you know, I've got, uh, I've got something in my mouth. Oh, isn't that what she should have been saying? <laughs> I don't know. I, look, I've seen the, the British and American office. I think I know. Really? <laughs> Not a lot of people can claim that. <laughs> so, uh, so you split up with Ringo, and then why did you come to Vancouver? Well, I'd never been up here before. I, I knew it was a nice place to be. And I heard there was orca whales out in the water. Orca whales? Right. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I've seen those only on logos for theme parks. I want to You've get never up. gone into the theme park? No, I've just driven by it. <laughs> said, geez, if I only had a coupon, it would be worth it. Why are you so cheap? I'm not, no, listen, I'm not cheap. I'm, I'm saving my money for a rainy day. Mm. There's, a, there's an orca library here. You can just borrow one every now and then if you want. Really? <laughs> <laughs> now, as, you know, as just a tourist, I don't know if you're lying to me. <laughs> Uh, what would I do with it? I'd probably, you know, try to recreate some of those free willy scenes. <laughs> with you as the kid, kind of go like this? Yeah. And you're jumping over you? Right. And I'd, I'd try I think that's the whole movie. That was, just, that was the only scene yeah. in the movie. It was it the took... first fully slow-mo movie. <laughs> if, if my uh, cinema history serves me correctly. I, mean, I tried you... to take a class at Columbia. You watch movies and there's always slow motion in it and everyone's yeah. fine with it. What if there was fast motion in every movie? It was just people walking. Oh. <laughs> hey. Hey, come here. Hey, why don't you get over here? <laughs> oh, no, you want the blue pill? But or somehow pill? everyone's cool with slow motion. Did you say blue pill, red pill? Yeah, hey, hey, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> you a fan of the Matrix? John? I love them. I love the. I, they get better as they go. <laughs> to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, you know, I haven't seen them in a little bit. <laughs> So you, you came up here just to, because orcas were up here. Right, and, I just, and I'd just never been, and I wanted to take some time out and uh, have a little fun. Sure. I needed a vacation for my vacation with him. Sure, yeah. Plus, I'm t- you know, as I told you, I'm trying to find a job, so I needed a little... I just want to decompress fully yeah. before I went on the job hunt. What, what, what job are you looking for again? Anything, really, but I need, you know, I need my weekends free. That's not optional. <laughs> for me. Non-negotiable for you. Is, right. You've got to only work Monday through Friday. Exactly. Right. What can you do? What are your special skills? Uh, well, you know, I can play the guitar and uh, uh, I can sing songs. You can inspire Beatlemania. Ooh, that's true. We did that once back in the 60s. <laughs> Everyone went nuts for our band. I remember. Yeah. Because, you know, we were really rock and roll stuff, you know? <laughs> People still like the Beatles. They still revere the Beatles. Right. The, you know that number one album, that album number one? Yeah, number one, yeah. It's Be- selling, Beatles one. Yeah. It's selling like crazy. And, I, and somebody told me, a friend of mine. What, what friend? Uh, this, well, well, he was in the band, this friend of mine. <laughs> You're talking about Ringo again. Ringo, right. He was Ringo. <laughs> He said, hey, you know, I was down at the library, the New York City Library, and they've got a, a number one album there. So, you know, if we do it right, we can keep taking it out and switching it off. We'd own it almost. <laughs> and then we can listen. You it. must already have it. Huh? I have it downloaded, but I really love to have a physical disc. <laughs> why, why do you need a job, by the way? Just for something to do. Yeah. Well, right. you know, I mean, you, you've been now alive for so long, and you're not going to be dead. Right. And he, like, can you die again, or do you... Yeah, I think I can die again, but come alive if I want. Right. <laughs> when you... Let me get into some details about this. Oh. If you were to get, like, smashed by a truck, 
Right. Would you come alive and you would be all mangled? Um, hmm. Well, no, because, you know, I don't have that hole in my body anymore where the bullet went through. Hmm. So um, you're just, you're healed when you come You're back. healed up, right. Yeah. Sure. But if, you know, you get flattened like a pancake, it takes a little longer. Mm. <laughs> to inflate. Right. What? How does one get flattened like a pancake? <laughs> you know, if you're walking down a street or if you're over at, um, if you're shooting uh, the Free Willy movie. And an orca falls on you? That's right. <laughs> You'll fall flat. Like a pancake. Hey, you know, waffles are flat, too. No, they're not. I think you're thinking of crepes. You think... Yeah. Well, maybe I am thinking of crepes. What is a waffle? You put, a spoon, you put milk in a spoon, right? Milk in a spoon? What are, have you ever eaten anything before? Now, here's a fun fact about me. I've never had breakfast. Is it because how late you get up? Or? I'm always so sleepy in the morning. Just, you know, unless I have my coffee, I'm a monster. <laughs> Give me a cup of coffee and I'm out the door. I, have, I do everything at the last minute in the morning. Mm-hmm. I did never you, learned. Did you write that song, though? Woke up, got out of bed? That's right. Yeah. Yes, put a comb upon my head. Found sure. my way downstairs and had a cup. That's about what, yeah. Right, just... right. I can't do breakfast. I'm already running late. But what about a waffle? Notice there's no mention of eggs in the song. Right. But mm -hmm. we had an egg song. We had a song about an egg Scrambled man. eggs. Oh, and Ooh. the egg man. Right. Yeah, that's right. Now, but Paul, did Paul write both of those or did you write the egg who, man Who one? ended up writing those? I think it may have been George Martin actually said, he was actually at the typewriter. But we were all sort of circling around him. We would write our songs together, all of us, one word at a time. <laughs> George R.R. Yeah. R. Martin? No, jo George Martin. <laughs> Ho-Ho is confused. Hello. She's thinking of... Oh, I thought I said something wrong. Yeah, George Martin, our fifth no, Beatle. She thinks George R.R. R. Martin, the Game of Thrones author, is who you're talking about. Oh, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> got up. Said hi to Jon Snow. Uh, got a cup of wine from Tenarius. Keep oh, that's, going. That's... Mm. Well, I don't want to give any spoilers, but talk about I know so I know far, one. Talk about big. Hodor. <laughs> oh, Scott, that's what I didn't want to say. <laughs> For those of you who haven't seen uh, the latest Game of Thrones, Hodor's fine. Hodor's fine. Do you know what happens in the Everybody Loves Raymond finale? <laughs> I haven't caught up yet. Yeah, those two twins they have. They end up going off to college at a young age. No! <laughs> they were like eight at the time. Right, but they were geniuses. In the last season, they got really smart. That was the whole last season was just about them, like, you know, doing math problems. Yeah, I don't think Peter Boyle or Ray Romano show up at all in the last <laughs> <Nope>. season. <laughs> or maybe I'm thinking of The Sweet Life with Zach and Cody. <laughs> That's what you're thinking of. I get those confused. Yeah. So now Dan here is a musician. Oh, yes. And you're a musician. Um, you know, do you, what do musicians sure, talk we'll about? Oh, we'll duet on something. Oh, great. All right. Do you know any Beatles songs, Dan? I do. Which, one, which ones do you know? Uh, I Will. I Will. That's a beautiful song. Yesterday. Too. Yesterday. I've Just Seen a Face. Oh, oh that's a good gosh. one. Actually, when I was eight, uh, I learned the entirety of Abbey Road on the piano. Wow. Really? That was like my thing, and I, I got so excited that I could play it all, and I made my parents totally fucking insane playing it over and wow. over. Wow. The whole album. What was it like growing up without friends? <laughs> it's hard. The TV show? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you don't get that up here in Canada, right? Could it, I it would be, be any more annoying? Uh, yeah. <laughs> But could you play a little bit of a Beatles song here for us? Do you do? Sure. Like, I, I hate yeah. to bring it up, and, you know, I know this is a surprise for you, but uh, this is exciting for me. I mean, it must be exciting for you, John, to hear someone else sing one of your songs. Well, that, yes, it'll be interesting to hear. <laughs> and it'll be... And I'll be watching every movement you make to make sure you don't mess anything up. <laughs> It's 
it's hard for you not to join in, isn't it? I know, it's such a great song. I, Dan, I'll try not to join in, but I don't know how. Please do, please do. All right. Who knows how long I've loved you? you. <laughs> Sorry, I told you, it's hard to do, but you, you please. You know I love you still. Will I wait a lonely lifetime? If you want me to, I will. I always went low on that. You can't hear it on the album. <laughs> they turned you down. Yeah. Because it sounded horrible. They knew what they were doing, those other three. <laughs> I threw it all on the wall, and we, whatever stuck. <laughs> we kept. Go ahead, Dan. Are we going to read it? <clears throat> Second verse. Uh, Same as the first. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, no, it's different. Not. Yeah, this is it's slight, <laughs> slightly different. And if I ever saw you, I didn't catch your oh, name, man. but it doesn't really matter. We'll always feel we'll always the same. Feel the same. Love you forever love you and forever. And forever. Love you with all love my you with heart. All my heart. Love you whenever love you we're together. together. Love you when we're apart. Love you when we're apart. Did you always talk it? <laughs> John Lennon invented rap. Oh, I wish I'd be a multi-millionaire. <laughs> you are! <laughs> it's not very polite to talk finances. Julian could have gone to college. <laughs> All right, close it up strong, Dan. Here we go. Uh, and if at last I find you, your song will fill the air. Sing it loud so I can hear you. Make it easy to be near. This was meant for a tenor. For the things you do endear me to you. Oh, you know. Are you ready? I I will. That's fine. Wow. Okay, this should be a quick note session, but that was good. Lifelong dream, man. Oh, yeah, man. did you ever think? My God. I thought you'd be better, John. <laughs> well, never it's... meet your idols. Yes, never. really. I know, I met Michael Jordan once. <laughs> he right. dunked on me. I have to ask. <laughs> Tell us this story. I was in Chicago uh, seeing, uh, I was trying to go to the top of that building, the tallest one they have, to uh, just see what it was like up that high. And a friend of mine was also in town there, and he said, hey, I got an idea. You know, we might be able to get into see the team if we tell them we're from the Beatles. I said, that hey, what, fr- what friend is telling you huh? this? One of the Beatles I was with, who I'm usually with. All the time, who played Ringo, drums. right? Ringo, right? And I said, "They'll never care about us. You know, we're not even a band anymore." He said, "No, people still like the band. Trust me." I said, "Fine." I put, you know, shoved my hands in my pockets, put my coat collar up. This is not going to work. I said, <laughs> "That's what you do when you're disappointed." Yeah, you know, I kick the ground, kick a rock if I see it. They'll put on a sour face the whole way. They, this is stupid. I could have been on the Sears Tower, you know. And they said, we got to the door. They saw us before we even got there. They said, come in and meet the whole team. I said, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything for them to sign. So, you know, I had them sign my uh, pants. And <laughs> the coat, I didn't want, the coat was so nice. And well, and I went in, they were practicing. And I said, you know, I look, ooh, I, you know, almost a mile high at some of these guys. They're all so tall. And I said, Mr. Jordan, you know, you're the best I've ever seen. Can I play one-on-one? 
He said, fine, but it's got to be a full game. And I said, what? <laughs> Wait, all four quarters? All four quarters. So, you know, something like 15-minute quarters. Was <laughs> oh, my like. God. And I'm not in any type of shape at, the, at that time. That's why, you know, I, I'm jogging now. But so... <laughs> Just today. Today. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's gonna, I'm going to continue. I know it. This one's going to stick. And he's, I'm playing him. We got a ref out there. Scotty Pippen is cheering for me just as a joke, you know. <laughs> and it's tied, you know. Uh, it's tied? Yeah. At 0-0 zero, zero at the start right of the game? Right at the beginning of the game. <laughs> right. And it took maybe four seconds for him to dunk right on my head. My glasses he shot. On your head. <laughs> he dunked the ball through the hoop, hit my head, bonk, and my legs shoot out to the side. <laughs> shoot out to the side, and I, I sort of do a split, and I'm my glasses are gone. Sure. They're gone for the rest of the game. And God, he must have beaten me 500 to. I don't think I had any points. <laughs> It was like a practice for him. But I didn't have my glasses, so I'd always... I'd always wanted to get back to play him. But I haven't been to Chicago since. And I've never been on top of that Sears Tower. <laughs> what a story. Wow, John Lennon. It's one I never tell. Oh, boy. see gnarly trails fresh powder too I grab bits of air so tasty it's true and I think to myself what a thrashable slow all my ski buds are grabbing tasty air. There are smiles on their faces as they pop nasty flare. I see gnarly back scratchers and tasty daffies too. What they're really saying is skiing fucking rules. I munch tasty powder. I'm talking about snow. Only trails that I'll never go, and I think to myself, what a thrashable slow. <laughs> and I think to myself, what a nasty, tasty, most thrashable slope indeed. Indeed. Thank you, everyone. Pray for my Donkey Pill! Thank you very much, everyone! That's our show! Thanks to Donkey Pill!